Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bonus Points Podcast. I am your host, Joe Garrett, as always being joined by Ollie Guy. Hello, hello. Hello, Ollie. And we are welcoming a new friend of the show here, Liam Woodhouse. Uh, Liam is a old friend of mine from college and someone who I chat to a lot of games about and also a very big fan of the franchise that we are talking about today. So welcome to the podcast, Liam. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for for coming on. Also, you're a very dedicated listener to the podcast, which is nice <laughs> because you always you always mention like things that uh, have happened in the the show, and it's always nice to have someone on the on the podcast that actually <laughs> listens to the podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I am a very big fan. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, Thank thanks for, for joining us. Uh, so you chose a game called, it's called The the Legend of Zelda Tears of the <laughs> Kingdom. So it, it seems to be some sort of like, uh, like kind of Banjo-Kazooie nuts and, bu- nuts and Bolts clone from Japan or something. So where, where did you hear about this game? Uh, well, I've, I've been playing Zelda since uh, Ocarina of Time. That was the first, first one I played. Um, I remember it being bought, my uncle bought around his N64 yeah. and showed us that this was like my first proper experience of a 3D game. Yeah. And I just remember s- just sitting there watching my uncle and my mum play through this game. I was never allowed to play it. I was going to say, <laughs> did, were you able to beat it like at that age? Uh, I So once they completed it, I was allowed to play it. But where I'd watched the game so intently, I actually pretty much had just memorized the whole game all the way through. And then, yeah. yeah, since since playing that one, my love of Zelda. So you kind of had like a, a live Let's Play from your uncle was the way you <laughs> experienced Ocarina of yeah. Time. <laughs> to be fair, he was quite a big influence on a lot of like gaming. Yeah. Just growing up, like he, he introduced me to the Ratchet and Clank series, which as you know, Joe, I'm also a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. And then other like game series as well like thanks to him it's because i'm a huge that's what why i'm a huge fan of those series because he introduced me to them but mostly zelda mm. which is uh, i'll see okay so obviously side ocarina of time have you played like most of them since then uh see i've never really played any of the the 2d ones okay like um you've lent me uh was it link between worlds mm-hmm. so i i've been sort of playing that but tears of a kingdom have just dominated my life yeah, yeah. <laughs> recently so i've had no time like i've looked in and I'm like i could play this or i could play tears of a kingdom yeah i think i know what i'm gonna play <laughs> so what's your play time since like release 150 hours so far wow. nice and I, I reckon easily before i get to the point where i want to finish the game i'll be at 200 hours oh my god committed that's like a job yeah. <laughs> it's not been out that long <laughs> I don't think it's a coincidence you mentioned before we started recording you've just had two weeks off work I think there's a correlation between yeah. those, oh, those yeah. two things yeah that, that has massively helped yeah. in, in my hours yeah what about you Ollie? Uh, well how many hours have I played? yeah and, and, and your kind of Zelda history um, well I like Zelda. I'm not like a Zelda nut or anything. I like the games are good, but I'm not. Wow, like a huge are you going to take fan. that, Liam? That was directed at <laughs> yeah, you. I'm not a Zelda <laughs> maniac. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a big idiot <laughs> Zelda fan like some people. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, no, some people are like so into Zelda. Like I like yeah, the games. Yeah, yeah. I think they're good, but I don't. I've never finished any of them, but wow. I've played quite a lot of them. But I just kind of normally switch off halfway through and do something else. So. That's my Zelda history. I think I've played maybe four of them. I like them. They're cool. Uh, and my playtime for this, I think I'm either at 15 hours or more or 20 hours or more. But okay. I think I've ticked over, Rick, because the last few days I've played quite a lot. So it sounds like you're keeping up your trend of not finishing Zelda games. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> finish Breath of the Wild either. I did two <laughs> two beasts or maybe three yeah. and then didn't, didn't play any more so, than that. I will say before we go on, probably a good time to mention it is we will not be spoiling the end of this game i've not finished it either ollie hasn't finished it liam we will mute no, you if you no, try I've to not. go too <laughs> I far i haven't finished it yet yeah yeah so none oh, of us are some, wanna com- we will discuss kind of some game story stuff and like the mechanics in that but like we will not go in depth so if you are still i'd say if you're still playing like if you're playing the game now you'll be fine if you haven't started it and want to know nothing i mean 
maybe i mean i guess you probably wouldn't have clicked on this podcast in the first place so mm. that's kind of like the uh <laughs> the overall spawn uh spoiler warning i think we've all done at least one temple right mm-hmm. I've done i think we've all done the same one which is the wind all, one yeah yes okay right. and i'm yes. also i'm in like the middle of the second one now okay so that's mm. what have you chosen as your second one the fire Okay. Ah, okay. So I, I've done water as well. Oh, okay. Okay. The... So, we're, well, okay. So, wind, wind temple. We'll probably talk about because we've all done it. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to go more in depth to, to one of them. Yeah. I really want to talk about like these games, like Breath, like Breath of the Wild Two is the kingdom are kind of in like a package, I guess, as like as an era of of Zelda games. And I thought Breath of the Wild has had an amazing opening. I also really like Tears of the Kingdom. So I, I'll start with you, Ollie, uh, just because you're less of the Zelda fan. Like, what was your like first hour of this game like? Um, basically, I was trying to get all of the abilities as quickly as possible. And then I was very surprised by, I think the way you basically have to find these different shrines, right? On the, on the like floating island. Because I play this at launch. This is you're asking me about the first hour when it launched like a month ago. And then I seem to remember. And what did you have for dinner that day, Ollie? Can you remember what you ate before you played? Because that might affect your experience. You go back to the where you actually start and then like up in the back of the room is like the route to the last shrine yeah isn't it? there's like that, that was very there, su- isn't there that was very surprising i was like yeah. oh my god you could easily miss that like they they that's kind of setting the scene for the whole game of being like you are really finding your own way so that was like mm-hmm. yeah pretty absolutely. cool opening even though it's such a small touch the fact that it's just not laid out in front of you it was like it was cool yeah but like i think i got off i got to the first temple in about 10 hours or maybe less maybe eight or nine so that's i'm very much a critical path sort of person so i was quite quick (laughs) what about you liam um yeah initially initially it was just like quite overwhelming You, you step out you come out of the uh it's not the the shrine of awakening i think it's called and then yeah, you just see the sky island, and it's just like navigating round round that, and then you see all the different elements around you, and you with like the the hooks and stuff that you put on the cables. Mm, yeah. and it's just looking at things and just like I wonder how I'm gonna like interact with this and do this and like and that's even before even you get like the ultra hand or anything like that. And then um, yeah, I I pretty much after I got off the the sky island and got to the ground which took me far longer than it ever should have (laughs) because i i couldn't so i went through the temple of time and i couldn't i got to the the bridge and obviously the bridge is broken and i was like oh how am i supposed to get over to that bit you're supposed to jump off of and then um i just did not look down i just (laughs) i climbed all over the i climbed all over the temple of time i was looking everywhere and then i went back to that bridge and then i just just look down and i was like oh yeah <laughs> so that, okay. that, that was actually the first 100 hours liam playing was just trying to get <laughs> off those <laughs> that great sky island just <laughs> looking up for ages <laughs> like <laughs> Oh, but that first then, bit when you jump this is what i wanted from you guys was the first bit when you jump off and it does the oh, music yeah. comes in and his hair oh yes of playing course, around yes. and the titles come up and i was just there because I, I, i've been recording a let's play of it and i was just like just kind of went silent, just like oh my god like this is like, this is like so amazing i loved it also that gold yeah. graphic style like when you first come out and everything's kind of like yellow yeah. filtered like it looks pretty amazing like that's quite a change from breath of the wild which was like mostly like lush greens when you come out of there and like links obviously got on his little whatever it is like his little greek looking thing it's like yeah. i don't know it kind of looks like it's from a different time to breath of the wild even just that area like it looks like more like ancient and like yeah just pretty mad i also didn't find my top so i had like topless link for that whole section oh really yeah because yeah. everyone kept saying about like oh you didn't get his top oh well it's yeah. more dramatic him just like half naked diving off this sky island just trying to yeah. land in the water <laughs> no i never found um even in breath of the wild i never found the champion's tunic you know the blue one yeah like the i played the beginning one. of that game twice and i never found it so I have no idea like oh, really? where that ever was. It's supposed to be like. Do, do you, do you remember Liam? Where you get it? Uh, I think it's in Hyrule Castle, isn't it? Maybe. The champion's tunic. 
It's like oh, the, the blue get... one that, that's on the box art, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's two though, isn't there? There's the uh, there's the ready the one, one that you you get the one that you uh, find on the Great Plateau, which you get from the the old king. Hmm. And then um, there, I believe there is another one in Hyrule Castle. I, I might be wrong as to its location, hmm. but I think like the main, you know, in the memories of Link and Zelda, he's wearing like a, that blue tunic. I think that's in Hyrule Castle. I think right. It's the um, what I did in Breath of the Wild is I I got that anti cold jumper off that bloke, and then I wore yes, that for that. ages. <laughs> like a really like, <laughs> like nothing's better than this. <laughs> I kept that off for a really long time. Um, but anyway, enough of Breath of the Wild. Sorry for that little tangent. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it will come up again because, as I said, these games are kind of linked. So let's let's talk about what's new. What's the the standout stuff for this game? Obviously, this game's so popular, a lot of people kind of know this. But just in case, it'd be good to kind of like sum up like what the new abilities are liam if you kind of want to just to uh, go through what some of the cool new things you can do yeah so you've got the um ascend which i think is by far the most useful one. Oh, really um that yeah i've found it most useful just climb climbing is such a such a chore mm. <laughs> but having the ascend just really like get into like a slight bit of flat ground when you're climbing and then you're spamming it trying to yeah. find a way just to get that last little bit up. And then um, you've got the Ultra Hand, um, which obviously lets you uh, stick things together, create mad vehicles or basic, Very, I'm quite basic in that thing. It's like I build the thing that does what I need it to do. I don't mm. get like I've seen videos of people who've like built mechs and stuff yeah. out of it and it's just crazy. And then um the uh I can't even remember what's the reverse time one called? Uh, recall. 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 Yeah, that one I found the least useful. Like I've in the first like I'd say in my first fifty hours, I used it like two, three times. Oh, wow! Really? really? Know, okay, that's crazy. Yeah. I've, can, can I I've try? And, can I try and like... blow your mind quick? Because there's a trick. So there's obviously a few tricks you can do. So one is like I know this won't blow your mind, but like you can use it to like make elevators. Like you move a platform yep. up and down, then recall it. So that that was like a everyday like you know go get milk from the shop use that I use for <laughs> yeah. it. But the the recent one that I found out was that. So, like, a good technique, so say if you need to get, like, one thing over somewhere else, like a Korok or, like, one of the shrine crystals or something, you could shoot an arrow with something on, like an apple or a bundle of woods or something, like, really far. Then if you go over to it, you attach what you fired to whatever you want to move and recall it, and then whatever Uh... you've attached to it could recall. So now that's, like, my go-to when I need to get a Korok up a mountain or, like, get one of those crystals across, like, a sky island. Anywhere you can shoot an arrow to, you can just for free, basically, move something. And I was like, now I've found the power of recall. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's great. Oh, man. The, um... That... I use that recall a lot as well for, like, I'd move a platform to where I want to go. Like, leave it for a second bring it back to myself and stand on it and like recall it back over there was like yeah. something I figured out quite early on for moving around, especially for like a lot of things are like slightly out of reach and the rock to climb it would be like wet or like surrounded in thorns or something else. For some reason you can't lift up to it. So you, I, you know, you could fly down to it from a tower, but if you just read, if you have a platform nearby, like say there's one of those president sign guys and they have platforms there, you can just like <laughs> lift and it just like float yeah. up to it. Um, but that was something that, like, I've seen a lot of people being like, oh, yeah, I, I cheesed this, I did it the wrong way, or whatever, and it's like, I don't know if you did, or if Nintendo were just like, you can do it however you want. So there's not really yeah. a wrong way, do you know what I mean? Like, some of the shrine puzzles and that, like, I would use the recall lift thing to fly over, but then the next section of the puzzle would require me to do something different, so it's a bit like, I guess it's okay that I did that. It's not like, oh, my God, I am outsmarted them. Like, they, they know people are going to do that, right? <laughs> Although... Yeah. One other thing is like on stuff that they know people are going to do, like as Liam was saying, some of the people that are like building mechs and stuff, like there's no <laughs> way that Nintendo, like I saw someone build a working drill and like drill through the side of a mountain. <laughs> no, they, like... they, sh- they showed a mech in one of their trailers. They showed. Yeah, but isn't it just like, like a they... block with like a little arm? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as like, <laughs> things, but like, yeah. like I, I, I mean, they, I, they've made enough games now. Like they've seen what people have done with Breath of the yeah. Wild. 
which at the time was crazy that what you could do in it and like people did things that i'm sure nintendo didn't expect like they know the tools that they are putting in the hands of like the gaming community like i'm sure there'll be specific things they didn't expect they'll do that but i'm sure they expected they'll do things that they wouldn't expect if that sentence (laughs) makes any sense (laughs) i saw someone um, also built metal gear rex which is just mad (laughs) oh wow Um, that's cool yeah, and the last one I saw today, someone had built a working set of scales and has worked out the weight of everything in the world by putting them... <laughs> That's so good. Like, Link weighs the yeah, same I, as I, 10 I, apples. <laughs> yeah, I saw that today as well. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, one, the one that was, like, that really... <clears throat> like really impressed me like not so much just for that the fact that someone did it but more the fact that it worked in the game is you know that there's like those stakes which you can attach to like anything in the world have you come across mm-hmm. those so yeah so they put those at different heights in the ground and sometimes two of them and stuff and then if you hit them depending on how in the ground they are they play like a different note like like yeah. as if it's a glass filled oh, up with wow. water <laughs> and then they created like a like a mine cart like a car with a like a beam emitter like a laser that would go across it and it would like <laughs> play zelda music and i'm like oh come on crazy. nintendo give give other developers a chance come yeah. on as if yeah. you've made like that incidentally just work like based on like the physics it's ridiculous but Lim, you said you weren't experimenting with ultra hand you're kind of are you just focused on like getting upgrades and like ticking off like getting the shrines and stuff are you not playing around uh, no i see i i find out like i'm not very creative in that sense mm-hmm. like i i'm very practical so i'm just like right this is what it needs to be done to do this task and that's all i'm building like i'm not <laughs> getting crazy trying to build like mad vehicles to yeah. get around or anything like that so i'm very much i set a goal and that's it i'm you know that's that's as basic as I as I go. <laughs> okay. What what about you, Ollie? You, have you like played around? Like, have you tried making a thing for the sake of making it yet? <laughs> uh, I tend to like make the thing for the objective, and then I'm like, how can I make this way better than it possibly needs to be? So yeah. it would be like the one where you have the glider, and it's like, oh, you put the fan on the glider, and then you fly over to the thing, and it's like, well, yeah, but if I put like two fans like on the end of like stoves with like a a a steering wheel like oh i put fans underneath it to like lift it and then like oh well um at one point like as it's flying like stick a rocket to it like then i'm just like i kind of need that jumping off point to be like i need to make something and then it's yeah. like let's just make the craziest the biggest thing ever and it's like but i also understand that everything i make is like single use because i don't have any way of bringing it with me so i just have to yeah. understand that it's okay to let it go but we did also miss one power we didn't talk about fuse. Uh, fuse, yes. If yeah, like. that's um, when I first started playing. I just constantly forgot about it in terms of like <laughs> using it to make weapons stronger. Yeah. And now, like, where well, I've got much better at the combat and the game and all that, I'm beating bigger, bigger enemies. And I'm just fusing everything to everything yeah. and making like some really, hopefully, like super strong weapons. Have yeah. you got any like but fun yeah. combos, like interesting things you're fused together that like surprisingly worked well? Um, no, mostly I sort of try and stick to like if I've got a claymore, I'll use like a hammer hmm. tool on it because that's obviously good for mining and it works best with the way you, that weapon's used. And then like some weapons look really cool. Like if um, I think it's a, a white Liz Phallos, it's got like a red red horn. If you stick that on a spear. It looks like a scythe. And oh, it looks, nice! It looks really. It actually looks really cool. So that's that's something that like if I get one of those, I, I'm I'm sticking that yeah. to a spear. <laughs> it just look. It just looks good. He doesn't swing it like a scythe, but when it's on your back, it does look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but yeah, mostly it's just trying to find things to fuse. But then obviously there comes a time when that weapon's going to break, and then it's just like you're reluct- you don't you're reluctant to use it because you don't want it to break. Yeah. You know? But if if you go to um, El- Elden, uh, you've got the, um, the like the the octo things in the ground, mm-hmm. and th- those ones suck in the weapons. So if you drop your weapon in front of it, it will suck it in. It will repair your weapon. What? So if you've made like a really, <laughs> if you've made a really good weapon, yeah. then that's a good way to just like keep it. Yeah. Oh, nice. But then when I first done that, I I kept like 
try, instead of dropping the weapon, I just kept throwing it and it was breaking oh, every yeah. time. I was just like, oh, this yeah. is not the, <laughs> what I was meant to do. The opposite effect. Like, it's quite <laughs> ironic. You're yeah. trying to heal it and you break it. Yeah, because th- that worked in Breath of the Wild as well for just like healing items. But like a cool oh. trick is like, so say if you have like a really powerful base weapon and then you fuse something to it, it the durability works that it will take away the durability of the thing you fuse before your main weapon. And because Uh, you can disassemble things you fuse, so say if you have like a really strong base weapon, I can keep switching out the thing that I add to it so I can keep that for longer is a trick I kind of, I think I've done that twice, but but that's the way the durability works. I loved, um, I was definitely more of a, I say like I'm not going to play it ever again, of course I'm going to play it again, more (laughs) of a shield fuser, (laughs) like much more than Mm -hmm. the weapons. Like the weapons I tend to make hammers because they seem to be really good. And also, where I am in the game, there's a lot of rocks, so it's like very handy to have a hammer. But I would always like zonai devices on a shield, like a spring, Go like putting the, spr- yeah. putting the shield underneath your feet, oh, yeah, like passing yeah. really high, <laughs> uh, using a rocket. Well, that did feel a yeah. little bit wasteful because the rockets are so good. But I was still like, it's pretty cool using that uh, flame throwing head on your shield is great for like because it tracks the enemies. So if they're like yeah. up on the ceiling, you'll yeah. like lean up. Um, and just like a light, which is a bit boring, but when you're underground, it's useful. So, although I did yeah. just find out today that if you put a light seed down and then smash it with a hammer, it like grows in the ground. I didn't know it was going to do that. So, yeah. I stuck some yeah, light so, so seeds a- on my anything, car. Um, <laughs> anything like growing in the ground, like any like bomb flowers and that, like you can shoot them and they'll blow up and stuff. Um, and or you can just fuse them straight to it like even like mm. fusing like explosive barrels to a shield which sounds like a really bad idea but then you just hold yeah, block, it does. and then it's like <laughs> yeah. they attack you and then it just blows them up but not you and then like sometimes there'll be a little yeah. patch of them so I'll run like quickly fuse one blow them up run go grab a, another one I'm the same <laughs> I really like the uh, the things and then things with the arrows as well like things like obviously there's like the, the keys or like keys eyeballs that like yeah. like home on enemies yeah. is like really like constantly useful and just like the fact that you know at any point i can shoot fire or electricity or whatever mm-hmm. i need because mm-hmm. I, th- I think like electricity is the op one because it, almost any enemy you shoot at they drop their weapon and then you can ah, just run in and get them so I, yeah. my main thing is i electrocute them first and then just hit them and they keep trying to run to their weapon and i'm like normally doing you know the big swinging attack that you do with yeah. like the two-handed weapons just like again and again like once your stamina gets quite high and i'd spin like like 15 <laughs> times before they can pick up their sword like yeah. it's kind of game over at that point <laughs> I um I never have any arrows ever. I never have any arrows. I never have any money, <laughs> so it's like I don't even buy any arrows. <laughs> like I always seem to be I, completely out of arrows. I don't know why. I don't know what's going I on. I can't remember the last time I dropped below eight hundred arrows. What? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah, think I I've always just got an insane amount of arrows. Yeah. <laughs> like I found ten arrows when I was, I was playing just before this. I found ten arrows and I was like, oh my god, I have ten. Because I normally only have five. So, like, I'm always out of arrows. Are you breaking, like, boxes and barrels and stuff, like, as you go around the place? Yeah, every so often. Like, I'll always smash them up with my with my hammer, but it's not... They don't ever really seem to drop anything. Money, I seem to get the most I, from side quests. I get, like, people... Are you get, selling your ore? No. Yes. Like, I don't know. Yes. Like, amber and stuff? Just, yeah, you yeah. should sell... Because, like... It does have other uses in, like, fusing with weapons and stuff, mm. but its biggest value is the amount of rupees that you can get from it like i think i've got like something like 20 diamonds that i can sell mm. and yeah so like that's a ridiculous amount of money yeah, and also then like like meals as well like say if you've got like you know if you found your like warm coat ollie then all of like the like the stuff that you would cook to make like cold resistant stuff just cook all of that and just sell it all and then if you cook like prime meat or something and like cook some of them yeah. together like they you sell them for like hundreds like of what? rupees like at a go that's crazy yeah. man you I get like crazy that. so that that's my main way for getting <laughs> money because the other thing with the ores is they're used for upgrading your armor and because i haven't got all the armor i'm like do if i sell my diamonds now am i going to really regret it when i want to upgrade my fancy hat down, yeah. down the line i mean i know it's a it's a great fairy isn't it to upgrade your armor yeah yeah i've never seen one i've never seen one so i don't There's know side quests to sort of unlock them right like i've definitely so done a one, few side you... quests but not that many i've done like yeah a few there's, there's four there, of but, them yeah. so you you're you will and when you run into one they mention where the others are so oh, okay you'll, okay you'll run into yeah, one eventually the, f- the first one that you un- unlock like, it's the only one that you can unlock at that time she'll tell you where the other four she'll mark them on your map for you oh, okay. and tell you where they all are and then it's just a case of doing each side quest to trigger that 
that fairy. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, once you've got all four, then you can upgrade your armor to the maximum. Nice. But uh, yeah, that's a, yeah. It's a good way to uh, save materials as well. Try to save your materials for that more than anything else right. yeah but because you don't know what you need it's kind of hard to like know <laughs> like what to, to say like i'm glad because i've only recently found a fairy fountain and i'm like oh man i just like this really unimportant like fish that i might have like cooked or sold like oh i now need five of this random like fish yeah. or something to upgrade my trousers apparently <laughs> so right. it's a little bit weird yeah um, oh well I, sorry i i have like entire sessions where i will just just farm stuff i'll just go around collecting all the like fish herbs all the just everything i'll just go around collecting everything as opposed to actually doing anything productive within the game so i've always got like just in this ridiculous amount of like resources you could available pro- you could which... probably build like a giant fishing net thing that just like sweeps rivers if you put your mind to it i've seen people building oh, like yeah. giant uh, gates and put them over the front of caves so when all the bats fly out they just slam into the gate <laughs> oh, and wow. drop down and they just pick them all up <laughs> it's so funny that's, a, that's like, a really good idea <laughs> humans in video games just like become as gross as humans in real life it's like <laughs> yeah. oh look this natural world it's like I build a machine that goes and collects up all of the goats and then cooks them for you, and then, you know, I was going to say that earlier on did you actually see that <laughs> No, someone I made like a, it would exist. Someone used conveyor belts and stuff to make like a meat processing machine oh, and they just like put animals on it and they come out as snakes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. That's great. Are there any um like e- either of you, I'm assuming not you, Liam, as you kinda claim not, but like are there any like fun inventions or like cool like little like surprise moments where you're like, oh this works, I didn't think it would work that have come up? Uh yeah, it's Korok, mostly Korok based, isn't it? When you got to get the two Koroks together, that's a real opportunity to do something yeah. mad. Um, I've had just sticking like rockets to Koroks and smacking them with a sword and having them <laughs> land like within fifteen <laughs> feet of where they need to be, which is like pretty good. Yeah. Uh, also, I got the I got the horse like it's not a cart, but it's like a dragging thing. You know what I mean? That yeah. thing that hangs off the horse and just like fusing the Korok to that was like the first time I found out I could fuse the Korok to something and I was like, oh my God. So I was literally dragging him around, <laughs> like dragged him over to where he needs to be. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. mostly Korok based. The, it's good that they put them in the game because everyone has just like gone completely mental. I feel like the creativity and all these things people are discovering they can do, it always starts with the Korok and then it's like, oh, we could use it for something else as well. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of videos of people like making torture devices for Koroks because <laughs> yeah. those, those ones where you got to take them somewhere, they are. I'm not a fan. Yeah, <laughs> so when I was, like, I see them, I'm just like, I, I've just got no time for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got no time to build a contraption to get you to where you need to be. Yeah, because I, I don't, I don't ever ride horses because I find I always just get off the horse and then I just run around and then by the time I've ran around the horse is so far behind me right i just abandon it yeah so i don't really ever ride the horse and like just call it all your horses from breath of the wild if they transfer over so i already had like when i got to the first stable i already had like the giant horse that's in breath of the wild oh nice so I was like, well i don't need to go catch any horses yeah. now because yeah. i've got the best the best horse in the game <laughs> yeah was that a nice surprise jay seeing your old horses at the I, I do, do you need to do something to bring them across? Oh, I thought you'd have them. Just, no. no, you just same safe, same switch. I guess. Maybe I, I don't, don't, I don't, I don't have I'd... them. I have a new switch, so I didn't have them. But yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I'm the same as you, Liam. I never, I never do horses. Like the only horse stuff I've done is like where it's like a quest, and it's like, oh, go mm-hmm. get the golden horse or whatever. You know, I've done that. Yeah. But like, I've not like I know I just don't want to miss anything because I'm like so like if I'm in an area, I'm like I'm gonna look at this area. I'm gonna like you know like um. Like the robot vacuum cleaners when they're cleaning, they kind of just like zigzag <laughs> left and right yeah. to cover everything. That's what I'm doing. And if I'm with a horse, the horse can't do that. Like I'm looking under every rock. I'm like, there's probably not a Korok under here, but it could be a frog. You know, I'm like checking everywhere, yeah, like yeah, yeah. hide and seeking. So like horses, it would just end up slowing me down because I'd be constantly getting on and off and whistling them. The other thing is one of my dogs is really scared of the sound of whistling. 
and it uh, meant that like when God. playing Elden Ring, I could never whistle to get my horse in that either. So I'm I'm scared of whistling in case it scares one of my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, the horses like because you jump off them and then you go, you find a cave. And then that cave leads out somewhere else, and yeah. that's it. That horse is that horse is gone. It's all right if you have, like. I haven't found it yet, but if you can get that thing where, in Breath of the Wild, you could summon your horse from anywhere. Mm-hmm. So and he'll just materialize in front of you. If if I found that, then I think I probably would use him a bit more. Yeah, but yeah. Just build a horse. I often just, build your own horse. Just build one. Robo. Yeah, horse. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The, I'm surprised I, people haven't. <laughs> I do get swept up in it though when I see the stable and I'm like, oh, I could just get my horse out and just like go for a ride and like, oh, it's so lovely. But like the reality of it is, is I could make a car that is like way quicker and more effective than riding the horse. Because like also the horse, I find that he gets kind of stuck on small things and like won't go down a little dip and just stop. And it's like, yeah, they're almost too annoying. realistic. Like they have really good like AI and like avoid trees and stuff. But like sometimes it's like, yeah, that's like, I kind of just want you to commit to this and like video <laughs> game my way <laughs> yeah. out of it. You know, like yeah. don't, don't do what a real horse would do. Do like a video game horse. I will say Ollie, just because you mentioned about if you build a thing, you can't take it with you. And it's like one use. There is another ability that will change that. That will allow yeah, you to I, like, yeah, I've seen that online, yeah, but I don't have it. Oh, so yes. It's just a single Didn't use for me. That one, yeah. yeah, there's also like, there's like auto build and there's like a... That's, that's the, one the thing, like, yeah. But there's also one where you can capture it in a ball, isn't there? Like the zone eye ball and then throw it out. The ca- the capsules? Maybe, yeah, I think so. Have you, not, have you never used any capsules? No, I have, but I mean, you can pick up things you've made and take them and then redeploy them. Are you talking about... I've not seen that. So, so auto build, <laughs> you get like, I'll just explain how it is because it's like... Yeah. It's a core ability you could get early on. So you get you can get schematics from people which will be like, this is a thing you can make. Also, anything you build, you can kind of look through your history of what you've built and say, save as a favorite and build wherever you want. So I think everything you're talking about, Ollie, is just auto build is kind of covering right, okay. all bases. Does that mean you need all the... So how do you have like, say you built it out of five planks, there's huge planks. How would you mm-hmm. get those? Would you need to be near them? No, so if if you're near them, then you can you just kind of have a, like a big circle that you guide over, or you can spend zonite and it will just you basically just buy them. So you can, when you don't have to have all of the materials at hand, oh. you can just spend zonite, and it's not too expensive. So you can just make whatever you want whenever, basically. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Because I did the um I did the like giant gashapon machine where you like put the charges in and then get all the balls coming out. I've yeah. Done, like, yeah. All that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so there's there's loads yeah. of them all round of all different stuff like capsules. I mean, you've probably found them all now by now, Liam. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, be- the best way to do it is to um, so if you find one, make sure you put something in it, even if it's just one item, because then it marks it on your map. Yeah. If you don't put anything in it, it doesn't mark it. Yeah, and it but shows you what, each, what what is available, yeah. doesn't it? So it's always it's handy to just. Um, mark all those on, off on your map you yeah know, just especially like because rockets they're the they seem to be the one of the hardest things to come by and they're definitely like most useful especially if you're like making a plane if you stick a rocket on it then you don't need to like worry about a, a runway essentially because mm-hmm. you can just launch it into the sky yeah but he, yeah. Ollie's just shoving them all on his shields willy nilly so he's no, he's <laughs> oh, never yeah. going to be able to do that is he <laughs> yeah, little, cool. just wasting your rockets that's another yeah. little good recall tip though uh, Liam seeing as uh, you might not be using it is uh, if you like if you're doing one of those gliders like a plane like you said if you kind of lift it up high and push it out as far as it can go then bring it back then recall it then that gives you enough time to kind of just fly off from anywhere basically you don't need a runway or to add a cart to it that really like the other day i got <laughs> i spent 15 minutes building a like i did well, not 15 minutes building a plane but i built a plane and i was like right i need to get somewhere and i was like <laughs> trying to just make it slide down this hill because i was like i don't want to waste zonite on just like getting a cart to make it roll so i was yeah. just like basically like trying to 
get it moving and then jump on it whilst it was moving. <laughs> Don't <laughs> sleep on recoil. See, this is the problem yeah. is because obviously so normally when Liam and I are playing a game like this, we're like discussing it the whole time. But we've been good. We've been saving the conversation for this podcast. So I feel like there's just so many tips that we've been storing up that we've not said. And now we're finally <laughs> letting each other know all of this stuff that would have been useful like 160 hours ago or whatever, whatever it was. I, yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. the only thing we've discussed, Joe, is we briefly talked about attaching a skeleton arm to a sword. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah. that was it. We somehow have not mentioned <laughs> anything else. So. Yeah, I've been good. Maybe I've been, because I've been, as I say, doing a Let's Play of it. Um, maybe I've been getting it out of my system because I've been like talking about it. Like, because I've been like the whole time I've played it. So maybe like all of my thoughts I've been getting off my chest because I've been like speaking nonstop uh, while I've been playing it. <laughs> um, we spoke, we, we very briefly touched on shrines earlier when you were mentioning them ollie but i feel like that's like quite a big part of the game that's worth kind of going in a bit deeper on so what was your mm. thoughts maybe let's compare them to breath of the wild once again the obvious uh, comparison so how are you finding the shrines in this game compared to breath of the wild liam uh yeah they're, i think they're, they're brilliant like some of the puzzles like obviously there's a there's a way to like the initial way to do it and then there's obviously they've created random ways like and people can work out how like a certain way to do it that's completely out of left field or whatever but i yeah i think they just they work well with the amount of stuff that you can do within the game so like you can there are ways to just cheese through shrines if you really want or actually try and figure out the puzzle itself like there's been some shrines like there was one in particular that took me ages and i just could not work out how to get it to, did you have to look to down go. did you have to look down liam was that what now, it was i probably needed to use recall as <laughs> yeah, point. that's yeah. probably what it was <laughs> trying to climb but up the gear that's like turning like oh, i can't get up this thing <laughs> the gear's turning the wrong way but i can't yeah. pull it down like, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's probably what it was but it i have i Worked out a way, but I just remember that shrine just making me so angry. Yeah. <laughs> just, and then obviously there's the extra little puzzle of trying to get the chest. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're super easy to get and others like they really do require a bit of thought on how to get through it, which, uh, yeah, I think they're, they're much better and I'm glad there's no combat shrines mm. so much. Yeah, yeah. Like there are sort sort of combat shrines, but they're not like the level of like, a major test of strength no they're not all, just, they're not yeah, all like good. the same basically yeah. and they're, they're more like little yeah. combat puzzles rather than just straight combat like the way they limit your items so it's kind of like oh if i get this i can then get this i think they work out quite well although i, I don't know this is my the controversial this is gonna be my first criticism <laughs> it's not even really a criticism but i i do think overall at least the puzzle ones i preferred breath of the world of uh, breath of the wild shrines and the reason for it is you might remember ollie and you liam because you might have listened to it on a previous podcast I was saying, like, for immersive sims, I like it when there's a lot of creative options, but I also like it when there's, like, a challenge. And I like it when it's, oh, I have to do something creative to solve the puzzle. Like, if it's just, you know, like, Minecraft, it's like, build a thing that's cool before a thing, that's fun, but it's not as satisfying as, oh, here's an obstacle, do something creative to get around it. And I feel like for these shrines, unlike Breath of the Wild... Often it's like, okay, they've got all of this stuff here. But like Ollie says, if I just use a rocket shield, I can just fly over all of it. And I could do that in like half the shrines or like the ones with the big target that like you've got to put a ball going to. And if you shoot like a, a fire flower at it or like a um, bomb flower at it, that just sets them off. And at first I'm like, oh, that's cool that that works. But I'm like, oh, but now I could just do that every time. And I don't feel like I'm... Like it, it feels like I'm circumventing fun rather than yeah. like cleverly getting. Like it's too, they're too easy to cheat because you have so many tools now. Like it's not as satisfying as in Breath of the Wild when there's electricity puzzle and I left a chain of like ten swords in a row to link them <laughs> up. Like that felt really like oh I've worked this out and I've broken it. Where well, this just feels like they've given me too many tools and the puzzle almost hasn't taken that into mind. And like I think it's fine, but I I find it less satisfying. Like, does that sound fair, either of you? <laughs> um, I was gonna come oh. in here and basically say that I think this is the best puzzle game ever made. <laughs> so maybe yeah, okay, not. good. Dude, that's good. I I want to hear the opposite. Of, I like, think why, why, this why, is. Why, why am I wrong? <laughs> well, we recently played Portal together in co-op, mm-hmm. and I look back at those Portal puzzles now, and I think they look so stupid compared to this. Like, 
the amount of variety and the amount of different things that are being offered to you it's like it's so like encouraging like it's like it wants you to solve it where i feel like portal is the opposite where it's like so abrasive and so strict that there's one solution here and that's all you can do and you might be able to find a funny way of doing it once or twice like in the entire game but it's mostly you have to do this thing in this order and that's it whereas i feel like all of tears of the kingdom not just the shrines is like the way i would describe the difficulty is that it's encouraging it's literally saying like oh you can do it like that thing you're thinking of is going to work and you can do it and i find that through the entire game it's just doing that over and over again and the variety of the puzzles is like it's huge it's not like breath of the wild where it was like you're basically going to be in one of five or six shrines and they'll be slightly different like oh it's the one with the maze this time oh it's the one with um the test of strength like i feel these ones are all different enough all the solutions are different enough that they i th- would say they're all all the ones i've done have felt unique i've done i've got nine hearts and one extra bit of stamina so i don't know how many i've done maybe 40 or so but it's like i think that I don't know. I think it inspires creativity and it's just the right, it's just difficult enough for you to have to bang your head against it a tiny bit. Um, in that, I think, yeah, it's the best, probably the best puzzle game ever made at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, none of that's probably like, just for me, it feels like, like, I'm not, I'm not doing, like, I'm having to hold back. Like, I know, like, a way I could cheat it, but I feel like I'm robbing that from myself. And that's not as satisfying as feeling like, oh, I have to be creative to solve it. Like, I almost immediately see either the solution or a way I can cheese it. Mm. And and I, I'm like, oh, I could try and find a, a different way to cheese it that feels creative, but I always just feel like there's one or two obvious ways to break them. It, feel, it feels like I'm playing, like, split-screen multiplayer and trying to not screen-watch. It's like, well, I can see <laughs> that they're there. I realize it would be more fun if I couldn't see them, but I, yeah. I can see that that is right there. And that doesn't feel as good to me as feeling like, oh, I've like overcome it in some creative way. Like, yeah, but I feel also, like you know my- that by doing that, by using a rocket or whatever, you're probably not learning something that you could use outside. Yes, yeah, so no, shrine. I end up not doing that. But then, I, but I've always got in the back of my head, I I could do that. And then I'm like, well, what level of cheating it is fun? Whereas <laughs> Breath of the Wild, I was like, I'm gonna do whatever I can to complete this shrine. Sometimes yeah. it will be like you know intended route. And sometimes it will be creative way. But no matter what, I'm trying my best to solve this shrine. Whereas in this game, I'm like, oh, no, 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 let's not solve it that way. I guess I'll do it this way. And that, like, I think they're still really fun puzzles, but it just, it, it doesn't feel as satisfying to me. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Um, but I'm still I'm still enjoying I, them. Yeah, I, I agree with Ollie. I, like, I go into shrines and, like, I can, I know that I can just use a rocket shield and whatever just to get myself through it. In fact, in fact, there is a shrine where you have to use rocket shields. Yeah. Like that is the shrine. And then, um, but it's just like, I go into every shrine and I'm just thinking, right, how is, how did they want me to solve the puzzle and how can I solve it? Like there is some that like, it's tempting to cheat my way through it, but I just, I just don't want to. I feel like it'll just take, take away from the, the enjoyment of the shrine itself and like mm. i'm 120 shrines in now and i don't think that apart from that one that i really struggled with i don't think i've actually not enjoyed a single one of the puzzles like yeah they they do all just they all feel unique obviously you've got the the training ones which obviously they're quite similar but at least you learn a new technique within how to fight and and things like that and then obviously you've got the, the combat ones but even they like they're so every one that i've done is so different and a different way of doing it that i just yeah i've never not once been tempted to cheat my way through a shrine mm. yeah like yeah. some of the the most fun i've had on this was when i first got it there was a shrine that's like you have to lift a ball out of a chasm and like put it in a thing by using like balloons and torches and stuff like that and like me and Bryony literally sat there for ages, like building different kinds of hot air balloon and being like, oh, if we like point them all inwards, could we like lift it up like this? Or like, if we put the fire breathers downwards, do they use his rockets? Yeah. And like, I know the one like with like the walkways just... at the top. I know the, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's just cool. About. Like, and the, the one I did maybe yesterday was the one where it's called something like 
a guide for rails or something and you basically slide a plank along some rails but it can slide off either way yeah and the first stage of that yes. i basically did a recall where i put the plank up and then i flew over to the <laughs> to the thing and landed <laughs> and then i was like all i've done is now I'm at the second stage of it. I don't know how you do the first stage of it. So like all I've <laughs> yeah. done is made it harder for myself. I mean, I did figure it yeah. out eventually, but like I kind of feel like they're quite good at doing that. But at the same time, I get what you're saying, Joe, because obviously it's not obvious to all you may never say, but me and Joe made some levels in a game called Humanity for the developers. Yes. And in that, yes. when I was making those levels, I was thinking like, I've got to put this huge sheet of glass here because otherwise people are just going to jump over. So like when they're making them, when they're making these shrines, they must be thinking about stuff like that, and they've just chosen not to do it. Yeah. So but yeah, de- yeah. I, I kind I, of I, I, yeah. I, a good way to put it is kind of picking back a bit of what Liam said. Was saying like I could cheat it, but that would ruin the fun. Whereas for me in Breath of the Wild, the cheating of them was the most fun because it was right, like yeah. I see what I'm meant to do, like doing it in some creative side way is like really fun because it's kind of challenging to cheat in Breath of the Wild because you have limited tools where in this I feel like oh I know I could do it that way but I don't want to so I'm just doing the base puzzle and the base puzzles are just good by themselves but they're often quite simple I I often end up feeling like it it teaches a mechanic and then it will do like a twist on it and I'm I'm generally just thinking I wish there was just one more twist or some way they complicated Mm -hmm. it or made it a bit more difficult and often I'm like oh no no that's the end of it and it was fun but I, I don't know. I guess I kind of just want them to be a bit more difficult is maybe... Um, yeah, that's fair enough. I think that's fair a, enough. A, a way to put it. Yeah. One one yeah. thing about yeah. the difficulty, I will say, is that they are like the right length. Like by yeah. the time I feel like I'm done with the shrine, it's like, oh, I can literally see the exit. So it's kind of fine. And then obviously you have yeah. the side chest, as Liam said, if you want to go back for it. But I do feel like there was one shrine that I got really stuck on, which is one you've probably both done where you have to walk through a laser to get the floor to open. Yeah. And at yes. that one, I was like actually starting to get annoyed where I was like, I literally have no idea what to do. And this isn't fun anymore because I, and that one is, seems to be an outlier of maybe the 150 or however many there are. <laughs> that one was yeah. incredibly annoying. But yeah, they tend to be like, they're over in five minutes, but maybe that's, that's enough, you know? Yeah, we, they're, um... they're quite simple puzzles that they, you don't, they don't take away from the game overall, I don't think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So to speak, keep it on the the puzzle train, I guess. So then the the other place where there's a lot of puzzles, apart from just the you know the Korok stuff, is like the the temples. So I guess we've all only done, you know, the one that we've all done is the Wind Temple. Um, yeah. So I guess we can kind of like use that as a I guess an average example of of what they're like. Um, obviously in Breath of the Wild we had Divine Beast. This is kind of like their equivalent. These are like four bigger puzzle areas that are tied to the main story with a boss at the end, which is of course, you know, once again, similar to the, the Divine Beast. So uh, starting with you, Liam, since you're the, uh, the Zelda expert, like how did the these compare, like not only to Breath of the Wild, but just sort of like dungeons and temples in Zelda's past? Like do, do these temples live up? Uh, so when I first arrived at the, the Wind Temple and it which wasn't the first temple that I did. The first temple I done was um, the water because I followed, as soon as I got to the ground, I followed the same path that I did in Breath yeah, of the Wild. I went straight to Kakariku Village yeah. and then I went to Zoro's Domain from there. So I sort of mirrored that. But in terms of like, so I was excited when I saw the word temple. I was like, finally, like that was the one thing I felt Breath of the Wild was missing. And I was excited to get back into the temple. And then, yeah, that probably my biggest criticism of the game is you get these temples and they don't live up to like what made ocarina of time majora's mask twilight princess so great was the temples were just so so well done and so like so good to explore like and challenging as well whereas these i just thought like yeah it's it's four or five switches i've got to press Mm. and then it will do the thing yeah. yeah so I, I felt they were just they didn't quite do what they i would hope they would have done which is a shame ollie yeah yeah i found the um today so t- today before we started recording i got to the fire temple and i mean it's not a good sign when it said fire temple one f and i was like oh no like there's more than one floor <laughs> and then i saw the switches the five things again i was like again like do i have to do this again but i will say The lead up to the temples, both the wind and the fire, unbelievable. Like getting there is amazing. And the boss fight 
there is a boss fight for fire one a bit earlier on sorry spoilers also amazing <laughs> it's like those sections are so good and in the bit in the middle where you're actually running around doing switches especially the wind one because i seem to remember that i had to keep eating something to stay warm so it was like i can only do it for oh, like four okay. minutes uh-huh. at a time and then teleport out <laughs> and like oh. find some stuff and then go back in in, again. in Rito Village you can buy outfits to... I don't have any money I don't have any money <laughs> <laughs> so I was going yeah, back I... to the stables because they had chilli plants there cooking yeah. a thing going back up for four minutes doing that I yeah. had fun though right, don't Ollie, get me wrong like, you like sell some like meat Liam you use recall <laughs> there we go that's your, that's your guy's <laughs> yeah. homework to change but yeah the um, man the lead up to the Winds Temple is like the best Mario game I've ever played like it's so good and it's so like you know when you really tense up because you're up so high? It's yeah, like every time yeah. you do anything, you're literally like, oh my God, like, <laughs> I hope I don't miss this thing because that's it. Yeah, the um, and the fire one, I'm not going to spoil it, but the lead up to that is also a real yeah. 10 out of 10. The, the water one is is equally as as dramatic as well. Oh. That's the, the other one that I've done. So, so that seems to be the, the highlight. And also, I know you kind of mentioned the bosses, like one of the, the, the criticisms with Breath of the Wild, one of the, I was one of the people that... Um, said this as well was just the bosses were really lacking they're always like calamity blah blah and it was like a they all kind of looked the same and were very similar whereas yeah. in this one the two bosses that i have done were wildly different i think the air one what air wind one uh wind, wind one in particular one, yeah. was very dramatic great music uh throughout that boss fight and yeah. then the the water one was cool like it was but it was completely like it was such a surprise because it was so different to the the wind one so now i'm really looking forward to doing the other two temples that i've not done yeah nice that's great <sighs> Yeah, the um, yeah. the wind boss, like I managed to beat it because I ran out of arrows, obviously. Um, so I've had to beat it with my <laughs> with my sword and literally oh, got nice, it on like a down attack. And I literally like, oh my god, I'm living my best <laughs> life right now. Like, this is amazing. That's yeah. the um, yeah. just well, actually, Jay, what do you think of the temples? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm the same. It sounds pretty much as, as you guys. Like, the actual, like, temple puzzles, it's just... Like, I think the thing is, is, like, like it's it's a shame that we're not getting, like, the big dungeons because that's what I did love from Zelda games in the past, the same as mm. you, Liam. But I think, like, essentially there's the same amount of content, or well, more content, but they've just spread it over the world. And I think you can't have both. Like, they took six years making this game. Yeah. Like, they couldn't have that many shrines, that many little unique environmental puzzles. Like, we haven't even spoke about, like, the, um, the, the towers, like the Skyview Towers and the puzzles surrounding them and stuff. Like, all of the type of puzzles you would expect in a, a proper dungeon have been spread around the world. And it just means, unfortunately, that the, the big temples have been shrunk down um, a little bit so like i kind of agree with you guys but i am always still excited when i'm like because i'm doing so much side stuff in between when i'm like this is the play session where i'm going to be going and doing the big story things because the cutscenes yeah. and the presentation around them is always really good as well and that's something else to look forward to yeah for sure i will say though one of my only negatives i've written down is i can't stand the noises that they make when they're not speaking like when they're not doing a voice line they're like hmm hmm like it is just like i wish i could just turn them off like permanently for every single character like especially some of the female characters like the ones that work in shops and stuff and like they're literally like ooh, and it's like oh my god i'm trying to sell you like (laughs) there's there's one in the zora's domain um i think it's um uh so she called yona like a uh, sidon's like wife or whoever she is and whenever yeah. you speak to her she goes like yes yes <laughs> like, oh, and then yeah. it will say whatever yeah. she says but she basically goes like yes yes <laughs> like every yeah. time but it's funny because once again because i'm doing the let's play of it i'm reading out all of the voices from what they say so for me like i'll speak to a character and they go like then i'm like okay hello link you know i have to like copy like whatever like sound that they made initially i have to like try and match it so it just means i have to do a bunch of silly voices so it works quite yeah. well i mean what do you think of like obviously we won't go to spoilers but like of the story like the cutscenes, like the the setup of the the world um how are you uh enjoying that uh i've i've loved it i think i think it's it's like zelda games the story is pretty much the same every time like it's much the same of mario is that the, the hero rescues the princess from the the, the thing it's, it's they're this basically the mario story but it's just this this one in particular there was like there was one scene in, that um that you get from i've either of you done the 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 glyphs I think yeah I've the geoglyphs i've done a few geoglyphs, yeah. Yeah. yeah so 
there's there's one cut scene that i got from one of those it literally gave me goosebumps it was like it was so good like yeah. the whole the whole moment of it uh, and then there is another there is another one as well which i can't tell you about because it's a spoiler yeah. but um, <laughs> <laughs> that again that was it, it was just like oh, so amazing and then um it's yeah the the story itself I've, it's it's a lot more a lot more interesting than breath of the wild i think and obviously you guys you're so like I'm I'm now at the end of the story. Like I can choose to end the story now whenever I want, but I'm just like, it's oh, it's, it's a really well they've really outdone themselves on this story. I personally I think like, there's going to be moments that you two are going to encounter later that you're going to be like, no way, that's, that's yeah, that's the the case. And I like, I'm excited for you both to get to that point because you have, I you will really enjoy it. Have you seen? Yeah, I will just uh, Liam. No, so okay, so you don't even know. okay. No, I I want to do all the shrines first, and then I'm gonna. So I've I've got 120. I believe there's about 150. Right. Wow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get the last lot of shrines, and then yeah, I'm gonna do the do the final fight because that's one thing that has always I found about a lot of Zelda games is the boss fights are generally quite quite easy i've never yeah. really and in, in this one i've struggled more with like just basic enemies and like leonels especially like if, if that's how you pronounce them they yeah. are just so even in this they're insanely hard do you want do you want and to know are, the trick do you want the trick there ancient arrows no well i mean yeah i mean you could just like <laughs> out damage them but the the trick for for lionels is you know the um they call like puff shrooms like the smoke bomb things mm-hmm. have you played with them much yeah. yeah, I tried that with it. It did not work for me. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I got, I got yeah. it to work. I, I was like under uh, under leveled, and there's not there's like in in the background like difficulty scaling for the the enemies. But um, yeah, just throw push rooms, and they keep going like question mark, like almost like Metal Gear Solid. Like, what was that noise? Like, can you just keep yeah. keep throwing them, and then you just whack them, and then just keep throwing them, and it, it, it's completely cheesing it. But I wasn't going to kill it fighting, fighting it fair, so yeah. <laughs> that was that was my only <laughs> option. I, I don't know. In the depths, there, um, the all the Leonels that I've seen are like armored, like those Bob goblins are. As mm-hmm. well, you know, they got the armor, and mm. I just got up high, and I had um, a, a Leonel bow anyway, so it's fine. I just shat, just jumped off, and because I've got all three wheels of stamina, I was just like showering with bombs. <laughs> yeah. and when I got down to him, I just had to smack him once with the sword, and he yeah. died. And I was like. <laughs> yeah. I definitely cheese that a bit, but I was never going to fight him any other way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've um, uh, I've seen one of those, but I was like, I'm not. I remember them from Breath of the Wild, so I was just yeah. like turned around, like I'm going back, like it's not worth it. There's no way. Yeah, there was um, a fort gliok. Um... Yeah. Oh, what? Sorry. A gliok. Are they, are, they the, oh, are they the dragons? The three-headed dragons. Three-headed yeah. Dragon. yeah, I was just about to talk about that. Yeah, I've, I, I I I just did that recently. Have you done one yet, Ollie? No, I've seen one, but I was too scared to go near it. I feel like I'm it, much early. I've only got nine hearts. So I'm like, I'm not doing that yet. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a cool... Okay, let's... let's look, we'll save that then. But there's... It was cooler than I expected, that fight. Like, um, what kind of... Like, the way it possessed. Um, um, yeah, possessed and like, and the, the way it evolved. Um, I thought was really cool. Uh, but before we move on for story, um, Oli, I realize you kind of haven't spoke about that yet. Um, like, what did you think of it? Like, so far? What? Like, the <laughs> opening act, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's just... I've seen quite a lot because I've done a lot of the glyphs mm-hmm. and I've done a temple. Are you I've doing them in order, the geoglyphs? I didn't know there was an order. <laughs> I'm just doing so, them as I see them. There's, there's a place you you find where it tells you the order, like where they are and the order to do them in. There's just a direct right order to do them in. Because oh, okay. I started well, off seeing them in, in the order, wrong order. Right? They save in order, so you can watch them back in order, I guess. Yeah, that, I, did, I didn't realise that that place, that's what they'd done. I just sort of went in there. I was like, oh, that's where all the glyphs are. Okay, I now know where all the glyphs are. Yeah, I didn't it does the order. think it gave me the order. Yeah, right, you'll be no, just... Tears of Pulp Fiction Ollie's been playing. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, like the world is fun to be in, but the story is just a bit of silliness, really. Like it's not what's pulling me forward. I know, I kind of know what's going on, but like, it's just, I don't know, it feels kind of silly and 
like it's there for the sake like because it needs to be there it's not doing absolutely nothing for me but then again i don't have any zelda nostalgia or i don't play any other games so it's like i mean i don't know if this is telling or not but i counted we got 54 comments on youtube questions and comments about the game and only one of them was about the story and it was saying that it wasn't developed enough so like i know i'm not entirely alone in this thinking it's just like kind of like it feels like a bit of fluff it's just like ticking along like ganondorf looks cool i've seen him he looks great but like the giant goat man the king like every time he comes Probably. on the screen like yeah brian he, like starts laughing and i'm like i feel stupid like playing this game <laughs> like i'm like oh i don't care about the story and like i know Zel- everyone's like oh zelda i wish zelda was playable but it's like what is she even done like is she even a character or is she just someone you save i don't have any attachment to her so it's like i kind of see it like the mario story you know so it's not it's just washing over me. Well, they're saying that some of the characters are cool. Like, I love the Goron dude that I'm hanging out with at the moment. He's great. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, whole... I would say I, I definitely lean more your side, Ollie. Like, I think I, I enjoyed the presentation and I enjoyed the cutscenes and like the music and like the way that the, they're edited more than the actual story. Like, there was one bit um, where I just needed to fire like an arrow with like a scale on it through something. You'll know what I'm talking about, um, Liam. Um, and just that, it was just, it just it was a cutscene of my arrow flying through the air and like it going through a thing. And I was like, just that looked amazing. <laughs> like the way that they did it and like, it was like water, like, oops, sorry. Uh, like water, like flowing off it and stuff. And like, that's what I'm impressed by rather than the actual story. Then I'd say for like the structure as a whole, like they're obviously trying to do something a little bit more complex than Breath of the World, but there was something very compelling about the beginning of the Breath of the World saying like, hey, like there's this big baddie in the very middle of the map in the castle. Your objective is to go kill him. Everything else you do is just to serve that purpose, either getting you Mm. stronger or getting the divine beast that will help you out in the fight. Like your goal is to kill that thing. Whereas in this game, I'm like, my goal is I guess I got to find Zelda, but is she here? And it sort of just all feels like, um, like I I like the simplicity. And I don't think they could have done that again. Like I think they couldn't have repeated that. And I, I, I do, something else we haven't spoke about is the way that it is using the same map and it kind of like, has the same area but does twist on them and stuff and as a big breath of the wild fan like that is something that i've really enjoyed but the overall structure of the game is not as good i wonder for you liam because you probably played breath of the wild much more than either of us was there like any big moments when you returned to like areas from breath of the wild you're like oh cool they've like done this yeah so the whole map in general like it feels it's, it's it feels familiar but at the same time like it's just wildly different yeah like you go to some areas and like because one of the first first places I went to as well was the Great Plateau, and that's all changed, but not so much there. It's like you don't recognise it, but it's also it's different enough that it feels new, yeah, to a sense. And then so yeah, and then there's um as you go to each major area, like there's things going on in each area, like in um with the wind it's all the the snowstorm and then quite similar in in the gerudo as well it's just, it's like a sandstorm basically but yeah it's the whole map just it feels different but it's yeah. still still familiar enough that i know where i'm going like i can just be like oh i need to get to this place i know the best route and it's yeah not varied much from that mm. route that i would have taken in breath of the world yeah but it's still yeah. it's I've I've not been anywhere yet that I recognise. Like the places I remember the most from Breath of the Wild are the the place with the fish people. Like that whole area yeah. I remember roughly what it looks like. And also the desert with those like Amazonian women. I remember yeah. those two areas. Does, I don't yeah. remember much else of the game. But like everywhere I've been now, you could have told me it was a new map and I would have believed you. Like I don't recognise oh, really? a single place. Yeah. I've not been anywhere. I've been like, oh, it's that place. Like it's all new somehow it's all new to me even though it's obviously like green fields and stuff but it's like, yeah i, don't I, I think that's probably single. your memory of yeah the original of breath of the wild and like you know like the rito village you know obviously you've definitely been there and that's yeah I must have done. you know mostly unchanged <laughs> you know the bird people sorry yeah can i just say something <laughs> yeah. about that by the way like that whole conceit of i mean i'm glad they did it because it showed me that i could put a pine cone on fire and use it to fly that whole thing of them like oh they can't possibly get out the village and we can't get any food to them it's like they are birds like the bridge is only about 25 foot long and i know the storm is meant to be like really bad and no one could possibly fly but in the cutscene, the little kid the youngest kid there flies 
So it's like, obviously you can fly. It's just fly over and get the food for your people and bring it back. Like, it was so stupid. It's like, I get what they were doing. So you'd learn to how to get over the gap. It was like any any other race of people that would have worked. But you've done it with like the bird people. Where like that one <laughs> yeah, but thing they work. are gathering supplies. Like they are. Like if you speak to them, they do say, like, "Oh, the adults are out gathering supplies." Oh, because because they the just guy, can't speak ferry to... them in. Yeah, because you speak. Yeah, but why can't they ferry them in? No, uh, so the the um, Hyrulean people they can't bring in the supplies that they normally would. Oh, and then, okay. So the Ritu people, like you'll find them, and they're they're gathering supplies. And they're like, if you find the adults... It's disrupted the supply chain, Ollie. Right. Yeah, right. Keep okay. basically, with politics. basically, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I see. All right, fool me. But, fool me, I guess. That is, that is one thing that I've not enjoyed. It's like, when you speak to various people, it's always like, they just basically tell you the same thing. So like yeah. everyone just tell... And it's just, it's just like... It's, I've mean i've just got no desire to speak to anyone in there's the a game. lot they talk a lot there's a lot yeah. of talking and sometimes and you just want to just get to the the point of it and they yeah they really go on in this game because in my mind these games are very much like gameplay focused work it out yeah, it's like yeah. no they really uh you know they really point you in the right direction even on like some of the like the temples like the um, the, the where the the wind temple and when I found my first of like essentially the button I needed to press and I saw it was like a big like fan thing and I'm like, okay, I obviously got to, you know, use a wind thing here. And then like Tulin, the little bird that's joined you is like, oh, maybe we need to use some wind. It's like, oh, come on. Like, this is like yeah. one of the games <laughs> where I'm like, I know I wasn't going to be here scratching my head for 20 minutes, but like, you don't like, you don't need that dialogue here. Like, yeah. this is, this is not like, I get that that's standard for most games, but this isn't meant to be most games. This is meant to be the game where you work it out. And I guess maybe because it's a critical path thing, they want less friction on critical path things because you know that could be a stopping point for some people um but yeah I, th th that sort of stuff it felt like a little bit more like old zelda because that has been historically a problem with zelda in the past is over explaining stuff yeah, that doesn't need time. to be explained i guess that you know yeah. we're older people playing these games i guess what what you were just saying then about like a frictional point um like i want to say to anyone that's watching this that hasn't played zelda or doesn't like open world games i am the same like open world games i get like decision paralysis i can't do anything so i'm like oh my god i might miss something i might speak to the wrong person there was a point in this in tears of the kingdom where i had to get 700 rupees to buy a piece of armor in order to protect me from some weather thing and any other game i would have been like oh, i'm not doing that like there's no way i'm <laughs> gonna get 700 rupees like, i can barely even get one and in this game i was like i'm gonna make some hammers and i'm gonna go mining and collect some jewels and bring them back and i was literally like living a little life in this game <laughs> which like is so rare that things like that happen to me the only other game i could think of where i was really like i'm gonna go and do something that's not for the purpose of the main story but to help me in another way is death stranding which obviously took over my life like an unbelievable amount <laughs> but having that as somebody who doesn't play open world games is like such a weird but like refreshing experience to be like i'm going to have a session of playing this game where i'm not going to tackle the main story i'm going to go and do this other thing and it's i know it's like open world games have been around for like 20 years but like it was so weird because i never normally do that and i kind of i don't know i found it the, the freedom of it not being overwhelming is like such a difficult balance and the fact that there is friction there but it's like it always feels surmountable like you can always find a way around it it's the same as i was saying about difficulty being like encouraging like it's always pulling you forward yeah just kind of a I, crazy design that can do that <laughs> i i think because i'm the same and i think the reason why this game is different to most open world games is the fact that i, I think it's the fact that you're deciding it like normally if it's a mm. game where it's giving you the side quests and it's saying do this do this do this do this, do this i'm like no <laughs> i don't want to do that <laughs> yeah. but, but in this game i love i love making a plan i love thinking i'm gonna load this up and i'm gonna do get do my cooking i'm gonna go try and get some we haven't spoke about the depths yet but do some like light routes down at the depths and then i want to go to a sky island to try and find another capture like i've made my little plan which makes everything i do even if the things are quite simple it makes it so much more compelling and i guess for for you liam who has kind of like created a bit of a, a mental checklist to kind of complete this game do you think that's why it's been engaging so much for you is because you're deciding what and when you do everything uh yeah i i think so because i i'm pretty terrible at like um open world games as well like 
I, I very much am more used to following a linear path, but with this game, it's a complete exception. Like it's a game like Skyrim, I played for about two hours, and I just got overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that to like I was being told to do, and like all I wanted to do was look around, <laughs> really, yeah. like and enjoy like yeah. the game. And whereas this, like you jump into the world, and I didn't have to go to Ritu Village straight away. Like even though that's sort of where it's like, oh, go go this way, but you don't have to. So I just feel like a more freedom to just be like, well, well, I know I, I don't want to do that. I want to go do this part instead. And like, like you say, you can make it as easy or as difficult for yourself as possible. So you can go mining to get to get gems to sell for rupees, so you can buy that armor piece, or you can find the ingredients, cook yourself a meal that will get you through that section like so either way you can sort of choose the path that you take so your game almost like even though it's not and everyone's experiencing the same things your game almost feels unique to you mm, like yeah. there's things that i've obviously within the first 20 hours that i done that you guys didn't do and vice versa so it's sort of like it feels like more it's about what my decisions and I feel like I'm making more of an impact on the world. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the game, the world that you're in. But yeah, so it was the same with breath of the wild as well. Like you go into it and you just feel that sense of like, once you get off the great plateau, the world is yours to do with as you please. Like you can literally go run, fight the, the final boss. If, mm-hmm. if you so choose. And the same, the same in this, enough. like, <laughs> yeah, well you can do it in this one as well. But um, they don't make it as obvious that that's what you can do. Oh, like, really? You have to do. I think you have to um, go into Hyrule Castle, and there's like a, a a challenge section there that you've got to do, and then you can literally just jump straight down and go fight oh, fight wow. Ganon. I, I can't wait to watch speed runs of this game. Obviously, yeah. I'm avoiding anything like that for, for spoilers. <laughs> but like Breath of the Wild speed runs are like some of the best speed runs, and the, and like there's still new strategies kind of coming up for it because you know it's a it's, this is an immersive sim it's all based on physics there's you know there's so many like little like weird quirks and stuff and i feel like this game like i i hope that the solution is in somehow using all of the tools i hope it isn't just like oh there's a good sword you can get early on and yeah. if you just hit it quit that's like i hope that like you got to build this crazy thing and recall like like stuff like when i found out that like the um the enemies that throw like giant rocks at you you can recall them to freeze them in the air and then like ascend through the rocks and then <laughs> jump off to do your slow motion arrow shots and i was like well, i've got like that's amazing but like yeah. like how many things like that are there that like i'm not utilizing is kind of the what makes this so so special and there's there's no wrong way of doing it right like they everyone has their own little story and their own method of doing everything like what i do i basically am using lookout point i think it's called lookout point as like my main hub lookout landing yeah lookout yeah. landing yeah everything i do i always go back to lookout landing like there's a little bed there there's a statue there there's a shop there and like yeah. i know there's other towns and i could go to other towns but like the way i'm doing it is i live at lookout landing and every time i'm done adventuring i go back there for a sleep and it's like <laughs> that is fun like it's not like i don't feel like i'm robbing myself by doing it that way like that's just the way that i'm doing it and that's what's amazing yeah. is that everyone has their own little it's not like oh my god you didn't pick up the thing well how are you possibly going to finish it it's like it doesn't matter because everyone kind of carves their own path um yeah yeah this i know we've been going on a long time but there's some things we haven't mentioned that <laughs> Go on. can i quickly whip through them just because i want to say them and have them on record that i said them <laughs> go for it <laughs> right it's it's running on the switch but i never feel like the switch is holding it back absolutely mental absolutely magic yeah. that it the game looks beautiful we haven't really mentioned how amazing yeah, like, yeah, that's my points. next one yeah absolutely incredible looking game art style was lighting. amazing oh, people man. were like oh should the art style change to the next one i was like no like <laughs> they found it this is it it looks amazing yeah. uh, absolutely love it the music is a step up from breath of the wild as well amazing music every time a song's come on it's been great and all the motifs that are coming through and like yeah. the little hint sounds you know they're like Da-da-da-da-da-da. like even that sounds great um and the like otherworldliness of like the the weird like backwards hymns or whatever it is that plays in the shrines yeah. <laughs> like absolutely insane the controls are like perfect like he literally link controls perfectly he never ever does anything wrong the only thing i will say which is my fault way too often i throw my weapons 
because for some reason I try and press R1 to attack and I end up just throwing whatever it's I have. It's because you've been playing me. Bloodborne. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why. That's what and the other is. thing I do oh. is whenever I want to put my sword away, I whistle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I still do that now. It's twenty hours in. Wait, in in, in the game or in real life? <laughs> both, <laughs> both. I whistle when he whistles. Let's put I whistle this away. With him. <laughs> yeah, I whistle with him. Um, yeah, they were like just presentation wise, and the fact the switch isn't holding it back is like crazy. I mean, what they've done here, where they've iterated on the foundation of Breath of the Wild for six years, if they did that for Mario Odyssey, I think I'd go mental. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I never could have seen this coming. Like the stuff they've added to it, I never would have guessed. Yeah, um, Liam. Yeah. I know you. You've got like I know you prepared some notes as well. Do you kind of have an equivalent list of just because we are running out of time, or just things uh, that you definitely want to mention, like stand up things or criticisms? Um, like the new ingredients that they've added and stuff. Like, so there, there's more effects that go on. Like you've got the underlines for for the depths. So I've I've really enjoyed the depth section. Yeah, do you want to talk like, about the depth? We haven't really mentioned them like hardly at all yet, and they're like a whole new big area yeah so i've i finished the depths like saturday i think no i i finished the like the depths it's it's huge and it, it took like it, i reckon it took about 30 hours of my game well, it's the same size as the overworld right it's like an exact like it's, isn't it using yeah. like the geometry of the overworld and then like reversed or something there's something like that yeah so if there's a river it's it's a black wall so that you can't get past it and then if it's like if it's up high then it'll be really down low in, in the depths and and vice versa. And you can also fight refight all of the um the bosses in the depths as well. So you, oh, wow. you'll okay. come across you'll come across them again, which um the flying one in particular is really hard to fight in the depths because <laughs> yeah. where it's quite dark anyway and then you're so trying the, to the stay wind airborne. temple boss that we yeah. mentioned earlier. Oh yeah. that'd be cool yeah. fighting it in that environment though. So fighting it in the dark is quite a, a bit more challenging <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. also because obviously the space that that one needs it's in a massive pit so <laughs> once you beat it getting out of that pit is kind <laughs> of kind of frustrating like especially if you're hunting light roots which the best way to get light roots is when you find a shrine on the surface just switch to the depth map and then just put a stamp there because that's oh, where the light clever. route is yeah and then clever. that that sped up the hole like clearing the depths and then there's yeah. also like there's armor down there from um, previous games like you can find um yeah. basically all of link's previous armor sets from like twilight princess majora's mask um ocarina of time um certain weapons that were in um other games as well i so, have a little um running joke in my let's plays every time i get one of those it'd be like like the trousers of time or something and it'd be like ah oh, from a time when a hero traveled through time and i always go like oh i wonder what that means i wonder if that's a reference to something probably not and i always just say something like that just to like bait out all of the comments and then like I, like 30 seconds or so later i say only joking i know it's from this yeah. Then, yeah. just just to bait and there's a lot of comments and then the comment editor going all right you got me so i'll yeah. be doing that a lot um yeah joe have you got Anything you want to add? If you're done, Liam, um, I did have another thing that. Yeah, go on. What, what I would like to have seen is like a return of like old equipment. So you know, like in um, Ocarina of Time and things like that, you had uh, grappling hooks and things like that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it would have been cool to like, especially with, although the Sky Islands didn't really play much of a part, a bigger part in this than I thought they would. I thought they'd be bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. um to navigate around somewhere like that a grappling hook would have been cool or it'd just been a cool like extra tool and i did you'll find it a bit later as well because obviously you get the sages um and you can summon them yeah um well it's sli slight sm spoiler you can have as many sages as you've got with you like so you use their abilities but in combat their abilities like not so much the wind one but the other ones trying to use their abilities sometimes they pull you out of the combat and you've got to chase them so you can use their ability to right, use it in yeah. the fight and that yeah. gets a bit like bit a bit frustrating in the combat it's quite situation. nice though because it's not like uh, oh you've got this ability you can use it's like oh no, no there's a person that's helping you out 
And like they might not always be right next to you because they're kind of doing their own thing. It's a little yeah. bit more like it feels more real, <laughs> but yeah. I guess frustrating. It would be like, oh, it would be handy to like move. be able to just summon that ability like quickly to your mm. side. So you can be like you can call even if you call the sage to your side, then yeah. you can access their ability. But that's can you not like, whistle them? No, no, unfortunately not. Stop, <laughs> we, Ollie, stop trying to whistle for everything. He came around our house the other day and he wanted me to make him a cup of tea. He just sat there whistling on the sofa. It was really rude. You're my sage. <laughs> you're my sage. Your ability is making yeah. cups of tea. And I just you're, pour tea on you. Yeah. Like, you're like a like, ghostly like entity yeah. next to me. And you go and make tea. Why do they look so scary? You see like, little cute Tulin and then like it's like, oh, and now I'm going to follow you around as this phantom. And it's just like white eyes. Just every time yeah. I turn around, just staring at me. Like, Jesus Christ, Tulin. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and they if you if you don't put them away, they can like get a bit annoying. Something like if you're just if you're just exploring a cave mm-hmm. or something, they just run in front of you and they're just like you, they block your view, or that you'll be in yeah. a fight with with like a with a like like, and you're waiting for its little um I don't know this tonsil to come out <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> to shoot it, and then they'll just run in your way and obstruct your shot. So you, right. then you end up getting eaten by the like like. Yeah. I guess just, just four people following around you in any game is like a lot of, you know, it's like a party of five, you know, it's like turning into yeah. like, that's like more than a Final Fantasy game. Like it is a, a lot of things <laughs> following around yeah. you. I mean, they are slightly transparent, I guess. That's not too bad, but I've only got, I've got two of them at the moment. So yeah, I guess doubling them might, you know, uh, be a lot more so sure on, on doubling. <laughs> okay. Or... Or more, or less. <laughs> the one that, I guess. the one, the the guy that I'm with at the moment, I can't wait to get his ability outside of the scenario we're in. It's yeah, so don't, cool. please yes. don't say it. I'm not please, going please to. I'm not say going to say it. what it is. That's one of the things I'm excited to find out. That ability is very handy in oh, a lot awesome. of situations. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, stop it. Everyone, stop talking, please. <laughs> <laughs> and using it in his, in his fight as well. In his his fight, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Joe, have you got a quick rundown of anything you want to mention? Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, I guess I haven't, I haven't said anything. Oh, sorry, Liam, did you have something else? Sorry, I've got one more. There was, okay, okay. So the, in, um, <laughs> there's one bit where it's sort of like you've got to do like a, attack and def- defend, like build like a fortification and stuff. Yeah. And it's only used once, but I think it would have been great to have like that used in other areas. Like, so, um, you know, I assume you've like done the bring peace to like Akala and things like those sort of missions where you got to go to the like the the enemy base and yeah just and you like walk with a crew right yeah you have with a, the yeah I've done one of those crew. I've done one of those yeah I haven't you've not done oh sorry I've Jay. not been to Akala yet yeah I've not been <laughs> oh no like, but that's like they're like, they're, they're, like, east, they're, like everywhere. they're everywhere yeah like they're marching, in a, marching in every people. every region like it's a monster cleanup crew so, oh no! I've not you meet them right at the yet. beginning. You meet them right at the start. <laughs> yeah, you do actually meet them quite yeah. close at the start. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I, I must have just not spoke to them. Was like, I've, I've not yeah. done yeah. any of those. <laughs> well, it'd be cool if if those fights were similar to the one that I'm talking about. And right again, it, once you get to it, you'll know what I mean, and you'll probably be like, actually, yeah, I think more of these would have been a cool idea throughout yeah. the game. Like, oh, I think Liam was just right. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just sat there like, Liam was right about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay, I guess I'll list off some stuff then. Um, so one of the things is like, for the, for the depths, I think it's really cool. I think obviously like, you can compare it to like, light and dark worlds that are done on previous Zelda games. And I think just because of the scale, it can be, it's like much less detailed and specific. I also can't help comparing it to like, my favorite game of all time Elden Ring where like it has like a big underground area under the map which is sprawling but it's all like uniquely designed full of unique areas and bosses and I couldn't help comparing it but I think artistically it's great I love the music when you drop down and just how far you drop down for yeah I think that's cool and I also like the way it's kind of like a um it and the the Sky Islands are linked as like the two new areas where it's like go to the Sky Islands to get like the Sunder Lions, which you can use to get you know things that take away the the gloom you know the gloom resistant stuff that can oh. heal your broken hearts. And so you and you want so you want to be up the Sky Islands for a bit to do that. But then also with the Sky Islands you need Zonite because you want to use like the forges and stuff because you want to be using the Zonite materials. But you get Zonite from down below. So I love the way you kind of have mm. a a natural back and forth between the Sky Island and the depths, and then the overworld is almost like its own thing. Like 
when I say when I'm making my plan for what to do, I'm like, is this a depths day, like a Sky Island day or an overworld <laughs> day? I do think with the Sky Islands, once again, like what you said, Liam, I thought they were going to be a bigger part of this game. I wish they were a bigger part of this game. I feel like there's some few standout ones, but most of them are very similar. And it's like bring the shrine crystal and there was there'd be that little catapult thing that you can spin mm-hmm. around and they, it feels a little bit copy and pasty and then like i found one where i had to skydive and like like skydive through these rings like as quick as i could i was like that's cool and it's like oh but there's several of them and like okay like it's they're not as unique as i thought and so i do kind of wish there was more with them but i've not explored the whole map yet and i've not done all of them um but still um really enjoying it um but yeah, I think I think I've kind of I think it's been most of the things that I really like. Actually, no, one other thing is uh, <laughs> is we kind of briefly touched on it. Is I, I I love going back to the old areas from Breath of the Wild. Like I love going back to like where you begin Breath of the Wild, as you said about the Great Plateau, and even just like oh, I remember there was a little cabin here before you know, where you got your warm jumper from, Ollie, and being like, well, what's that? And like, oh, that's been taken over by someone and it's different. And like going back to these places that you know and seeing how like they're changed is something that, like I didn't think I'd be nostalgic for Breath of the Wild because yeah. it didn't come out that long ago. But I guess because it is one of my favorite games and I do have such fond memories, like that has been something that's been quite special. And it actually came up once again in one of my Let's Plays is I was starting one of the episodes and I was up at the... um the water temple and just while i was setting everything up i had like the music playing of the temple and on my screen it was like the sunrise and just how (laughs) beautiful it looked and i was like this game isn't like good or amazing or a masterpiece it's special like that was the only word i could think about this game is special there's just something about the way it's come together the way it looks the way it sounds the way it's designed like even though you know i'm not like getting involved in the story like the the feeling of it is like this game even compared to Breath of the Wild, does feel special. And so in some way, us kind of getting nerdy and in the weeds, like we can't even really sum up just how how incredible this game is. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the the list discussion. But I'm assuming, Ollie, we probably got a few questions first. Uh, Yeah, but can I quickly ask you, what was that sun thing you said about the the broken hearts? Because I got four and I don't know how to fix them. (laughs) Oh, so um, yeah, you get, is it called Sunderlions? Are they called, Liam? Yeah, Sunderlions, yeah. So, so they're they're like just like shiny gold flowers that you find on the sky islands and if you cook them like i just cook them by themselves because i don't care about mm-hmm. them healing hearts they'll heal your your broken hearts in the right, uh, okay in the depths if you go in the gloom yeah. but just yeah. being on I'm, the surface will heal your the broken hearts anyway yeah or in a light route yeah that will heal it as well but you won't obviously recover those hearts yeah because i'm just, in the midst just, of the fire fire temple and i've got four broken oh, so oh, maybe you're I can... still, oh you still got them on the surface i'm not saying yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah okay yeah if you go yeah. if you go to a light route you can do that but yeah there's the sunder lions from the sky islands like they're right. everywhere like we, i'm assuming you probably haven't done many sky islands yet then ollie or you uh, haven't realized... i've done two of the ones where you like to put the take the crystal back okay and i've done a couple of like you just ride the block up and then hang out yeah. do you know how like, long they, that they took are, they me are to realize that. That what that the recall of the, the block <laughs> Yeah, I I was just playing one day and I was just like, why don't I just use recall to use that to get up yeah. instead of like building a balloon? And I was just like, I text my friend who I'm playing it with, and I was just like, I've just top tip, do this, and she was she yeah. was like, yeah, Liam, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, okay, I just <laughs> like Liam, I didn't se- think about secretly it. Secretly playing hard mode over here, just <laughs> li- limiting. The- you can also you can attach those things to weapons. Those things that fall from the sky. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of funny. I've it's I've a done, giant chunk, that. and you just like add it to my stick. <laughs> um, and then so there's um, oh sorry, go on. Sunderlines as well. You can also find them on the surface if uh, rocks that have fallen from yeah, yeah. from the sky islands. You'll find them uh. around. I probably those. I probably have loads and I just thought they were like yeah, to make very a flash common. grenade or something and I never looked at it again. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, we did have a lot of questions. So I had to be quite tough on picking them because there was 54 on YouTube alone and then obviously we have Twitter where there was a, another load and then Discord, the bonus points Discord, loads of people were chatting in there even now. Um actually, that's a good time to mention that just quickly in the bonus points Discord, we've had like a traffic light spoiler system for people that are playing breath of the wild and like it's worked perfectly enough that i didn't know that you could use those sun things to heal your broken hearts and i'm in that discord every day so it's that effective at stopping spoilers anyway this first question is from karate it's actually about the post game but i've read it and i don't think it's a spoiler 
but I'm going to leave it up to you guys whether or not you think we should do it. Well, I, we don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it's not a spoiler. Like, but you're it is the, about. You're the only one that can have a. Yeah, judgment. but it's not. Yeah, but I don't want to read it out and then you'd be like, "We, you've spoiled." I know, but what are you ask? It's like saying, "Like, oh, I've got I this don't think food it's here. Sp- I don't think it's too spicy. Is it too spicy for you to eat?" It's like I don't know. I'm not <laughs> eating it. It'll be too late yeah, by the time I, I put it in my mouth. I know how sensitive you are to spoilers. <laughs> I I think you have to say it now because you've teased it almost yeah, too much. Okay. I kinda so karate, <laughs> yeah, it's about post game. So karate. Yeah. So after you so, die, yeah, <laughs> after, so Link, it's, after Link gets shot, this is on YouTube, but they're in the Discord as well. And um, they said the worst part of this game is the lack of a post game. Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild had a heavy emphasis on improving the lives of others, whether it be side quests or defeating bosses in the main quests, and the fact that the biggest quest of all. We still don't get to experience how our actions have changed the world as it's really disappointing. Especially with people who want to go back and 100% it, they're going to constantly remember the final boss list is still there even after defeating it. This is still a 10 out of 10 game, however. So basically when you finish it, I think it just kicks you back to your last save. It doesn't, mm-hmm. you can't go back. Yeah, it's, it's the same with Breath of the Wild. It done that as well, which is, is yeah. Good. yeah. I'd I'd like to see like how your actions have changed the world. But unfortunately, it's mm. it's a common theme in a lot of games, isn't it? That once you beat the final boss, it just kicks you back to before the boss, and it's just like, yeah. I would like to see, like maybe even if it's like there's no more blood moons or whatever. Obviously, I don't know how this story affects the blood moons or whatever. Mm. But if it just kicks, like just lets you go back, and you just your objective then is to just clean up the world of all the monsters. Like, mm-hmm. It'd just be yeah. a fun challenge for some people. I personally probably wouldn't do it. But it'd be a fun challenge to know that I could, if I just wanted to just play. Yeah. I could be like, oh, I'll clear this region today of as many monsters as I can. And I think that would be quite cool to do. The the problem with Blood Moons is they're like a technical limitation. It's basically because it's keeping track of what you've killed and what chests you've opened. Once that's taken up too much memory, it does a Blood Moon to like clear that cache of memory, basically. So that's why they happen at like seemingly random intervals. (laughs) Because if you've been doing a lot of things, you'll get Blood Moons quicker like that's like yeah. a yeah a, like like a, a technical limitation I, I just think it's just the world's too big and too vast there's too many characters like if it's gonna like live up to the idea of this is the world after it's changed like i think that's like another two years of development or something like i think yeah, it's true. almost the scale of the game makes it unreasonable and i think the solution is to do what liam's doing where you know he's got right up to the finish line <laughs> and now he's going as left and right as he can before taking that final mm-hmm, step mm-hmm. across <laughs> Yeah, the um, Death Stranding again, but I really liked their little tongue-in-cheek way of doing it. Have you played it, Liam? No, I, I do have it, but I've not played it. Like I, I got it free on Epic. Like, it was oh, one right, of the okay. free games. So I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my thing. So it's in my yeah, library. Yeah, so Because yeah. to be fair, like list, when I listened to the podcast, it did sound like it was a game that I would enjoy. And yeah, funny enough, awesome. I was... I, I was listening to that podcast whilst doing deliveries myself. <laughs> I, was <laughs> deli- <laughs> I was delivering food myself and I was just like, this is just really fitting for what I'm doing right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was delivering bodies while I was listening to it and while, yeah. <laughs> while, I, was, while I was lugging them up this hill. <laughs> the um, So a spoiler for that. I'm going to spoil the ending of Death Stranding, everyone. Not story-wise, but just how they deal with this is a bit tongue-in-cheek. But after you beat the final boss, they show you like an hour cutscene or something of like, oh, you did everything. It's wonderful. And then it says two weeks earlier and spits you back into your apartment. So it's like you never did it, but it gives you a chance to like mop up all the extra, all the extra bits. But I think, I think that was a really good way of handling it. Yeah. Also, uh, um, I know it's a game that like famously Ollie and I have kind of bashed a little bit on this uh, podcast, but the recent God of War game, Ragnarok that the way that handles like the end game is like masterclass and it's like the only like it's you would need just loads of money there's so much unique dialogue because obviously like that's not really spoilers but the character that combine that you're a companion with can change throughout that game and like there's events that would cause it so that you know companions you were in an area with before you were no longer with when you go back to an area and they have unique dialogue and stuff Mm. like like i'm not the biggest fan of that game overall but the way they handle post game is amazing and most games couldn't do it because they must have spent a lot of time and uh, (laughs) development hours in able to to implement it nice i didn't even finish that by the way i thought you gave up no, no, we we finished. We, I want to see the story. The story, the story is excellent in that game. Okay, fair. Um, <laughs> got a question here from Muppet. 
this is an actual question for both of you. Go to you first, Liam. He, I'm going to read his whole comment. He basically says, what was your favourite side quest series? For me, it was the continuation of Tarrytown questline. Breath of the Wild, you helped build the town, form a community, and even witness the town's mayor getting married. To then continue helping out the town in Tears of the Kingdom, it felt like a continuation of Breath of the Wild than the main quest, and a really rewarding story to witness. Without spoiling the quest, the end of it has a great payoff. So, Liam, what was your favourite side quest? Um, that's, a, that's a really good, tough question. Um... I don't know. I've I've done so many now. It's just like yeah. there's been like some that I'm just. There's one where you've got to defeat pirates. I thought that was quite good, and then you can um, you encounter the the villagers from the displaced like the displaced villagers, and then you tell them like it's it's thingy, and then you also you help rebuild that town as well. Yeah, the, is that the Tarry? Uh, is that Tarry Town? No, it's, it's a different town. Oh, okay, it's another town. Oh my god, okay. Um, right. <laughs> and you, you 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 help them rebuild, and that's that's quite satisfying to do. And then the Tarry Town one is really good as well. That was one of the first places that I I went to, mostly because I wanted to build my own house. Yeah. Um, which yeah, that was a bit disappointing, but I won't go into into that too much. I'm not. I'm got, not been there yet. So. Yeah, you got like <laughs> no the ta- Tarry Town itself is again it's it's amazing. Like it's, it's, that, it's that was really, my favorite quest in Breath of the Wild, Tarry. Yeah, Tarry. it's a, it's a really cool area, and then yeah, obviously it's it you can build your own home, and that yeah that kind of fell a bit flat for me. Mm, and, mm. So, and you you guys will you'll you'll find I, well I imagine you guys will feel the same as well once you see that area. I've seen and, I've seen pictures of Link's house, so I know what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind Won't of say anything more than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, okay. So, Joe. Uh, so, quest. I'd say like my favorite like series of quests is the the Lucky Clover Gazette, which are the newspaper ones. Like I think oh, they. Yeah, I didn't think about those. They are really good. <laughs> they're fun ones. But then there was a quest I did recently, and it's not like a great quest in terms of gameplay, but it was just quite nice. There's a um an old man in Lookout Landing who you build like the stable for. And he's looking for his his horse called Spot that's gone off wandering. And they're easy worried. He's like, oh, it's my old horse, but like they can't have gone far. And then you go and get them and bring them back. And then he's kind of like, he's like, oh, I'm so good to see like my horse is back again. It's like, oh, I bet you loved it out there with the other horses eating the grass, like the wind on your face. And it's kind of like, God, you know what? Maybe, maybe I maybe you should be a wild horse. Maybe you you know you yeah. you would prefer that. And then like. They're like, oh, you can have this horse, and it's up to you. Do you want to add them to your like stable, or do you want to release them as a wild horse? And I released them as a wild horse. That's obviously what they wanted. And gameplay wise, I I ran like a hundred meters, grabbed a horse, brought it back. But like, yeah. it was like, oh, that's just a little personal sentimental story. I quite like that. You were like Zonai glue, please. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need some more of that green glue. <laughs> yeah. My um, my favorite. I mean, I've not done that many because not that far, but I can't believe we haven't talked about him but it's the sign guy <laughs> yeah the sign <laughs> yes. guy is unbelievable isn't he what a great <laughs> stupid little thing that is it's like can you hold this sign up using a wheel and a plank like and somehow you'll find a way of doing it and then yeah. like talking him into letting go of it it's just like yeah, and he blows it. his mind every time. He's like, "What? <laughs> it's standing." It's like, "Yes, just like the other ten. Like, <laughs> and he's like, "Let me give you something extra special this time." And it's like one bomb. It's like, "Oh, thanks, mate." Like, I do appreciate it. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, it's, a it's a sleepover. It's a sleepover ticket. So I've got like at least thirty of them now. I'm just like, "Can you stop giving me the tickets?" Yeah, like, I've got no intention of using them. Can you just stop? <laughs> and I, like, I to get pony points, I need to pay to stay. So right. your tickets are not helping. <laughs> Yeah, fair. Um, I've got, it's not a question, but Evan Hariardi always writes in with like some development stuff and they've written in about um, how they made the map. So this was actually about Breath of the Wild, but obviously it still applies to Tears of the Kingdom. But um, to help visualise and grasp the world of Hyrule, director Hidemaro Fujibayashi constructed a prototype Hyrule the size of Kyoto so I meant like a scale map and um, to deter- determine how often a player would encounter a shrine, enemy encampments and Koroks based on how often you would see mailboxes and convenience stores <laughs> like in Kyoto so you're literally like looking at a map and being like okay you have you know this here this here and, and then laying it out the same way um, 
for the distance landmarks, Fuji Bayashi literally inserted Coyote's historical landmarks into the prototype, and then having Link climbing and walking around the real castle landmarks. So, like, obviously they didn't just copy Kyoto's layout, but, like, in order to get a grasp of, like, how far things need to be away from each other, like, that is just... Yeah. So, it's such a clever idea to use, like, human-designed things like that, you know, to replicate them. It's crazy that I've not heard of that happening before, um, yeah. but I thought that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. You, you um, see that work. Cool. Like, the fact that, like, you climb up anywhere and you look at the view... It looks like whatever view you're looking at has been handcrafted to be like this is the best possible angle, but it would mm. be that from any angle. Like, like we, it kind of came up like me and uh, Ollie just talking where we've been playing through uh, Bloodborne, and and then we all, then we kind of back to back played like Lies of P, and I was I was yeah. kind of struggling to articulate <laughs> why, even though like technically Lies of P looks better, like I'm not saying it looks bad. But it just like just the composition of the frame and like even though it's all like the same kind of stuff, the way it's arranged, you can tell when there's like a higher level of artistry that has been put together. And I think that is something that can be said about Tears of the Kingdom and like in every regard. And it's just another thing that's very kind of flowery and loose and hard to put into specific words. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's the way I really feel about it. Do you think this isn't been written in. I was just thinking about it when we we're talking. Liam, do you think you could go back to Breath of the Wild now? No, I, I, I. So I did go back to Breath of the Wild, like at the beginning of the year. I tried playing it on Master difficulty, and mm. I'm, I'm just not good enough for that. Like, I, I, it was so hard. So I, I just ended up just oh, playing it on, um, on the normal difficulty, and I was enjoying it, and then. I started playing this and I was just like, oh, there's no way it's going to top Breath of the Wild. Like, Breath of the Wild is my favourite game of all time. Mm -hmm. And then this, hands down, i will just like, everything they f they could have improved on, I think they have. Yeah. Like, it's... At first I was like, the abilities, like, oh, they're not as good as the abilities from Breath of the Wild. But now I'm just like, yeah, they're more fun to play with. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The abilities in Breath, Breath of the Wild are great. But these are just more fun to like, and you know, I say I'm not that creative, but I do try to be like creative in the sense of like when I'm building something to do something, serve its purpose. I'm still like, oh yeah, that's that's a good idea. Like, and then even yeah, some of the, well, like, I mean, you finished the game, right? So you must be a bit, <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't have been able to. Oh what the, you mean Breath like, of the Wild? You must be a bit creative. No, like Tears of the Kingdom, like. No, I've not finished Tears of the Kingdom yet. But well, I know, sorry, but you're you, right at the you end. You're right at the end. Oh like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've done yeah. everything. So you've done every I've done, shrine or whatever. Like. <laughs> I've done certain things that are like I was impressed with myself or I'm like, yeah, oh, that exactly. was a really good idea. And it's um and then I've done certain things just like not jump on a stone to reverse it to go back up into the sky yeah. <laughs> hundred hours in and i'm like oh hang on i could have just done that that would have saved yeah. me so much yeah. time well so everyone I'm, has moments I'm still, like that don't they i'm still learning like little cool features is yeah it's just so good so much better yeah. than breath of the wild they i think they done outdone themselves what, what do you think joe well what was the question what the question was if Sorry. you could you, you go back to breath of the wild today and oh yeah yeah like, um no, it's only not straight away. Like I, I think, I think it would be tough. Like I think, I th the problem is they're so similar in so many ways. Like all the same sort of mm. UI, same sound effects. Like great fairy fountains. They use the same animations and stuff, which could easily be done as a criticism. But I think tis the kingdom yeah, lazy. Also, like, kind of wouldn't <laughs> exist without brother. Yeah, like I'm not saying that, yeah. but I think the fact that they're so similar. <laughs> You would, I, I think you would be constantly reaching to try and build something or recall or ascend and stuff. Like, I, I yeah. do think it would be difficult. Like, if someone was saying, I really want to play Tears of the Kingdom and they hadn't played Breath of the Wild, I'd be like, play Breath of the Wild first. You know, like, Breath of the Wild is incredible still, yeah. but just you got to do it in that order. Like, I think it would maybe in like, I don't know, like six, seven years' times, I'd be like, I could play them back to back again, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that would be the only way to do it. But after finishing Tears of the Kingdom, I think if I try to play Breath of the Wild, I'd be thinking about what is missing rather than what is there. Yeah, well, I, I think, think Breath of. Go on, sorry, Liam. Oh, I was going to say, I think there's going to be a third, third one. So a third yeah. based in this because um, it was a fan theory that I saw on Reddit where uh, the colors that were used. That's probably so true. That's in the green <laughs> and then so the last one will be red like red based don't know what they would do like again well, it's go, like, commit commit now what would it be called what's it going to be called blank of the blank 
<laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I've I think it'd be something to do with water in terms yeah. of like maybe because you know they've done the, the sky, they've done the land, so maybe they're going to do something like Hyrule gets flooded or something similar to like a Wind Waker time type of situation. Maybe that's the sort of direction they'd go, but I just can't imagine what like what they could add to the game or add to this world to make it even better mm. Mm. like in in my opinion like I'd, I'd be excited to see it though if they announce it i've i'd i'd be just e- eagerly waiting like the five six years and i'd want them to take five <laughs> six years because i'd like they have with this because i i want another game where i'm just like yes this is it this yeah, is going to yeah. be my life again for a, a minimum 150 hours <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I um, I think maybe Breath of the Wild might be a bit boring now. Like in my memory, it's quite empty, and there's a lot of climbing. It was mostly climbing, whereas like in this game, I've got one extra quarter of stamina or half. I can't remember how it divides it up, and I kind of feel like I have enough because there's yeah. so many. There's other so ways many to ways get to ascend, <laughs> no pun yeah. intended, without yeah. like climbing. You know, you can build a thing, you can use ascend, and then also yeah. the fact that they give you like multiple ways to circumvent rain and climbing. Like, I don't know if you have it yet, but there's like suits you can get that allow you to climb, and like elixirs you can drink that allow you to climb. Because yeah. that was always one of the the, the frustrations. Um, yeah. but, like, you've always said about Breath of the Wild being empty. Like, I always think that. I, I don't know what you're on about because I always think that like <laughs> Breath of the Wild was jam packed with things to discover. Yeah. I think that might be like a bit of like a was it like a phantom memory or something? Yeah, um, maybe be- because you think of the wild open areas and then yeah. the, so many of the areas are really dense in it. Um, I still love obviously Breath of the Wild, but yeah, this has kind of like you know Breath of the Wild was the mountain and then this is like on top of the mountain, so it's like <laughs> it's higher, but the the mountain was still yeah. there. <laughs> uh, right, should we? Put it on the list. Put it on the list. Okay, we have the list up. This is going to be the 42nd game that we are adding to the list. So let's uh, let's start with the obvious to get it out of the way. Liam, where on this list would you like to place it if you could? Number one. Number one. Shocking development. (laughs) Okay, now now the one that's not as definite for me. Ollie. Where would you want it on the list? Um, well, I've had to like swallow my pride a bit with this because I was talking to Bryony about the potential place that I would put this game and she called me a normie and it really shook me and I was like, oh, am I a normie? Is our podcast for normies? Maybe it is because <laughs> I would also put it at number one. Despite oh, the fact would. that I like things that are, I normally like things that are a bit rough around the edges, this game is so good that it's like, usurped that feeling because it's like just that amazing so i would also put it at the top yeah i gotta say to be fair our like top 10 is looking quite normy like i know know, we have some like we have some like (laughs) weird ones that are higher up than most people would say i think i think to be fair the most out there one is prey and i suggested prey (laughs) you're my humanity yeah, I guess Death Stranding over Last of Us, that's probably, that's that that's getting us covered <laughs> for not yeah. being normie. Um, okay, I mean, it's not going to surprise anyone that I would also have it at, uh, at number one. But before we, like, put the stamp down, yeah. um, I, I want to give Liam, because as I know you have listened to all of these episodes, like, this is your chance to criticise, or if there's anything about the list that's been driving you crazy, this is going to be your chance to, to voice those opinions. Um, there's nothing that's particularly, like, Thingy. there's certain games that i feel like you guys spoke h- more highly of that they didn't get the where they really deserve to be like right. uh, one that stands out is driver san francisco like from what i remember you guys absolutely love that game <laughs> yes I, we do I played, and ollie has keeps putting things over it Thank i played <laughs> i played it years ago like when it first came out and i remember just having the best time like, yeah, I've got it's, it's fond great. memories of just how fun it is and like just the the switching between the cars and all that and yeah. I just remember having like the most fun playing it. Yeah. Um that that was a that was a great two weeks, Ollie. You got that was a it. great was a... Do you know what? Should we move it up in honor of Liam? Yeah, being let's here? put it. Let's so move is that twenty one? Where, <laughs> where should we put it to? Um I'd definitely put it above Skyrim at the very least. <laughs> I, I would put it above Skyrim, I think. 
Yes, this is not a normie list. Moving driver San Francisco a bunch Skyrim. Skyrim has proved this is not a, a normie <laughs> list, Ollie. That's Skyrim's a- now in the bottom. Half. <laughs> right. I the wouldn't put it above. I wouldn't put it above Resident Evil. No, that's that's fair. You um, another I is- <laughs> <laughs> Ratchet and Clank. I feel you guys played the wrong Ratchet and Clank game. Sorry, yeah, to- it was Chris, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Chris. Yes, it's yes. Chris, yeah. Like, I respect the fact that someone's also a massive fan of Ratchet and Clank, but I just feel like there is much better Ratchet and Clank games out there that would, yeah. I think, would rate a lot better. Um, I don't, I don't agree with the La- uh, Death Stranding being above La- Last of Us Part Two. You haven't played like, it, yeah. No, but the Last of <laughs> Us, the Last of Us Part Two is just so good. No. No, you, you, what are you going to, what are you going to compare? What are you, what are you comparing? <laughs> What's and, the last of us compared to what? Um, huh? Well, I will, I will, I will play Death Stranding, and then when I do, I will put in the comments one day. I'll be like, "This oh, yeah. is what." No, I've... you're you're going in with your biased mindset. You're <laughs> going to be going in looking for reasons. It's, you've made up your mind before you've seen the uh, the games. <laughs> yeah. And, Although to be fair, I don't think Death Stranding would hold up that well after Tears of the Kingdom because they're quite weirdly quite similar. But Tears yeah. of the Kingdom is better because you make everything from scratch. So, and Disco Elysium, which <sighs> this is going to shock you, but at the I've I've been playing it, and yeah. I don't I don't rate it. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it, I know it sounds crazy, but I I just don't want to be in that world. Like yeah, I I recognize that's fair enough. I recognize the quality of the game. Like I can see yeah. it. Like everything about it i'm like wow this is actually like amazing like what they've done like with the yeah the, all the unique voice dialogue start some of the conversations i've had I'm, I'm like why am i even having this conversation i don't want to be like there was one a guy who talks about like critical race theory or something like that oh yeah, yeah. oh the guy yeah, in yeah, the measure bridge heads. yeah measure <laughs> yeah i was just like yeah. he's just going on and on and on and i was just like this this is bringing nothing to me and you know I, I don't know. That get- was one point I did bring up on the podcast of me thinking like, I feel like this is either like not needed or like I'm not smart enough to kind of really understand. <laughs> what he's, yeah. he's, like, that is optional though, real- to be fair. That is optional, that part. Oh yeah, but I, yeah. I felt like I did everything. I mean, I would love yeah. that game overall, as you know. I wanted to see and talk to everyone because I was like gripped by almost every word <laughs> that everyone said in it. Yeah. But that was one point where it got a little bit too abstract and I didn't have any real world comparison, even though I know he was... Yeah, we don't need to get too into the the weeds of that, but yeah, that I'm not surprised that that's the point you reference. Mm-hmm. Um, are, are you going to go back to it, Liam, or have you? Um, do you think you've I, I, seen it? I I, I want to because I I love the look of it. I love like the way it's designed. Everything like everything about the game itself, I think, is amazing. I think it looks like stunning, and it's it's got so so like it's interesting. But again, I'm I'm not that interested in who killed that person. <laughs> Like, like right. it's such a horrible yeah. place. Like, I'm honestly surprised there hasn't there's not a dead body on every corner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's just the point. whole that the whole environment. Point. But also, I've had quite a tough year this year. Yeah, and I think I don't like, I don't want to be thrown into such a bleak environment. No, like, that's fair yeah. enough. I had the same with um. I played Death Stranding during COVID, and I was like, I can't do this. It's too much. Like, yeah, it's too bleak. Yeah, um, I just that's fair enough. That I guess world. I guess if you're you're in that mindset, Liam, and then you're like, do I play Tears of the Kingdom? Like joy, brightness, sunshine, or like Disco Elysium? Like yeah, was... they, uh, yeah, I can see why you gravitated towards Tears I... of the Kingdom when they were the two you had on the go. Like I can't if... believe though that Disco Elysium is getting slandered on the day it's being knocked off the top. <laughs> <laughs> but it, to be fair, from from listening to the podcast about it and from what I've seen of it. Even though I don't personally enjoy the game, I think it fully deserves the the second spot. Like the it second is, spot, it, yeah. It's it's definitely yeah. worthy of of number two, a hundred percent. Like just through what it's what it's trying to do, it just hasn't spoken to me yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And who knows, we've not finished Zelda yet. Maybe we've finished Tears of the Kingdom and be like, there's no post-game! And then we'll put Disco Elysium up. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's the way it will go. You're telling me Zelda got rescued? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, so this is the big one. So Disco Elysium has been number one on the list since, what, episode two? Was it number two? Or I or actually, number three? two or three, preempting, yeah. preempting this, I looked it up, and I think it's been at the top for about 520 days. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. uh, one mighty good showing. And who knows whether Tears of the Kingdom will match that. Like at the moment, it, it's kind of hard to think of many things that, that would. I don't know. I've just enjoyed this game so much. I think as well, it's been like, it's been my little piece of happiness. Like mm. at the moment. And I just, I'm there. Like, obviously I've got other things that make me happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like my daughter, if you're listening, I love you and you are the main that makes me the happiest. But Aww. but if you were ranking Breath of the Wild, yeah, yeah. Tears of the Kingdom <laughs> and your daughter. So what, how, how does the top three look? <laughs> um, but yeah, it would if if I were to have like franchise games from like from different from all the same thing, my top ten list would basically be dominated by Zelda games anyway. Right. So same here. It would. Um, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, sorry to Breath of the Wild, which I had on sort of level pe- pegging with Ocarina of Time anyway, mm-hmm. and it's it's beat both of them for me personally. Yeah. Amazing. So your favorite game of all time? Yes. What's weird as well though, is like, what, what's weird is like I don't feel like I need to f- finish Tears of the Kingdom. Like I feel like if I never finish it, that's fine. Like I don't have a compel. Like I want to play it again, but I don't feel compelled to see the end of the story. It's like I just want to pl- be there, and that's yeah. kind of enough. So like if I never finish it, that's fine. Like it's just a weird feeling to have that like, <laughs> with a game where like I just want it just to exist there. Do you know what I mean? I think I've, again, I feel like Death Stranding was much the same, where it was like just enjoying being in that world yeah. so yeah congratulations yeah. to well done i Tears feel like you're very good like ollie do you want to because oh. i feel like this is such a big occasion like knocking disco off like yeah i feel like like do you, can you sum it up nicely like i feel like <laughs> i want this to be a special thing and what you're do you mean, can i sum it up that? nicely uh i don't know i mean disco elysium unbelievable game super pulpy super heartfelt artistically driven kind of an amazing Amazed the fact that it was sat on the top for 520 ish days is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, when I played it, it touched me. It was something I've never seen, but I'm literally saying that Tears of the Kingdom is so good <laughs> and it's so polished. And it's another game that was unbelievable. I could not believe what was happening when I was getting these abilities and fusing things together. And it seems so obvious, but at the same time, it's like, how, how does it even exist? How is any game ever going to follow this? How is anything the, ever going to yeah. be as good as this? And on the Switch as well. Like, and on the Switch! Compared like, to like how, the other consoles. There must be people making open world games now looking at Tears of the Kingdom going, oh my god, what on earth are we going to do? Like, How can we ever do anything? Ever. Like, It is yeah. just that amazing. So well deserved Tears of the Kingdom, even if it makes you feel like a normie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah congratulations <laughs> tears of the kingdom yeah you as a uh, as i expected you said that perfectly ollie i agree with everything that you uh that you said uh thank you um so much liam uh, as well for uh suggesting this game for us i know that was like you were meant to come before you were originally going to come with breath of the wild and then we realized it was getting so yeah. close to the release of tears of the kingdom like it would, imagine if we were here discussing breath of the wild right now <laughs> yeah. where the world was going like bonkers <laughs> over tears of the kingdom so um yeah thanks for finally getting zelda on the the list long overdue but i guess that kind of naturally brings us to looking forward we are not ending the podcast here we have more games to to do <laughs> so do you want to kind of talk about some of the the stuff we have coming up ollie yes so we have three more games confirmed uh next up in two weeks time we've got league of legends that'll be on the 14th of july that's going to be like whiplash going back to something like that after this. Um, and then two weeks after that, on the 28th of July, we have Earthbound. And announcing for the first time, on the August the 11th, we have a guest. And they are bringing Jet Set Radio Future, which I'm very excited about. I'm very into that game. And also, you might be able to guess who the guest is. Because I, I guessed the game before 
they've confirmed what it was so maybe it's known that they love it so yeah it, it is it is okay. i reckon <laughs> i reckon we'll get at least we won't confirm but i reckon give your guesses down below we'll see whether you can pat yourselves on the back when it comes out do you want to kind yeah. of chat a little bit about for those i know some people play along with us and do the games that we're playing i know a lot of people did for this one um <laughs> how how would people play it if they wanted to what jet set right well let's just go through them so league of legends free to play pc and mac anyone can play game pass you can also get some extra stuff pretty cool earthbound is on the switch like snes online thing that you get when you pay for the online so you can play it there jet set radio future bit trickier um you can emulate it but it's quite ropey it seems like the best way to do it is to get an xbox 360 and literally buy the disc um you can get it on ebay for about 20 quid but that version does have some weird like slowdown in some places but it's not the end of the world but yeah i'm gonna be getting an xbox 360 for this one so yeah and, and that's um a nice natural way to move on to saying a shout out to, to all of the the patrons because we are both going to be buying <laughs> disc versions of this game yeah, yeah, and that is yes. going to be um directly paid for everyone on patreon so um throughout the podcast you've just seen the only tiers um on screen so thank you to all of them uh everyone else uh who's kind of been on the the discord and been on patreon and actually liam is a patron yes, uh, as indeed. well so. yes <laughs> yes thank you thank you literally paying to be on the podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i finally bought my way onto the show <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then um the upcoming up the thing coming up on uh, on patreon is uh, i know we keep going on about it uh but blood brothers are bloodborne let's play uh you may have heard me mention earlier that ollie has been playing bloodborne that is because we have begun the let's play we've recorded the first kind of four or five episodes they're not edited yet but they're in the can ready to to be uploaded uh once yep. we reach the goal of 135 patrons we are currently on 127 we kind of fluctuate around there we kind of like keep yeah. getting really close and then dropping back down so it's in your hands once we reach the goal there's going to be free for everyone like the entire series you don't have to be on patreon uh in order to um watch it but just for us to kind of release the first one like that's the the landmark goal so it is in your hands yeah nice one that's a great little sum up of uh blood brothers people have been asking about it commenting about it like what happened to it it's like it's happening it's just a bigger production than i thought we realized when we started <laughs> yeah so we had we, to do got, some uh, work to get it all together we got the whole set we got like there's some custom like uh a set accessories i guess we we'll say there's been <laughs> yeah. which has been created by people in the the the, the community there's custom music that has been written yeah. for it once again by people in the community it's kind of become like a real bonus points community project us all kind of working to, together to, to get it done uh, so that's been really fun so we're really looking forward to, to getting it out but as i say it's in your hands it's up to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, any final words you want to say liam before we uh, kick you out of here no is your no, last no, chance honestly thank you for having me it's, it's been really fun um uh, thank you for letting me talk about my uh, my my new favourite game. <laughs> like, so yeah. it's been Thanks great, for, great to be out. It's great to finally yeah. be able to talk about it as well. Like, I've not really had much. I know. I was going to say, like, we, we can finally like talk about. It. There's so many times when you go like, "Oh, have you gone here yet?" And I'm like, "Liam, no, no, wait, wait, wait on the podcast. We can finally uh, talk about it." Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching or listening. We'll be back in two weeks' time with League of Legends. Obviously, that's a free to play game. So if you want just a bit of context for what we're talking about, it might be worth just downloading it and uh, playing a few games. There's a good chance as well um, if you're listening to this, like I guess on time once it was released, uh, that we'll probably be doing some play dates on the bonus points discord as well yeah. so if you're on there or want to join there uh, and you don't want to kind of dive into a pvp game by yourself um everyone's really nice and friendly on there that might be a, a good way to to play some games i'm probably going to be doing that uh, but yeah apart from that yeah. uh, we'll see you all soon thanks so much for watching and listening and uh, we'll see you in the next one bye cheers bye bye